two, one. Welcome back to Come and Brew It Radio, coming to you from Texas Brewing Inc. in Haltom City, Texas. You can find us on the web at txbrewing.com and be sure to follow us on Facebook and share with all your friends, eh? In, the <laughs> in this episode, we're going we're gonna to talk about some new brewing methods, some very old brewing methods, and pairing foods with beer. We have a brand new type of hop that several of us have worked with and the results to taste and talk about. Mikey's going to walk us through a decoction brew day, the advantages and pitfalls, and we'll taste the results of his latest attempt. Also, we'll have our newly engaged resident Cicerone, Sandra, walk us through the basics of some food and beer pairings. In the second half, we're going to taste a variety of beers that Mikey brought back from his recent voyage to America's Hat, beautiful Canada. We'll sample some beers and talk about his experience in what may be the world's most polite beer scene. So throw a blanket on your moose, put the little Mounties to bed, and let's see what the beer scene in Canada is all about. Hey. Before we get started, please be sure to check out our Patreon account to help support the show. Every little bit counts, and if you visit patreon.com forward slash come and brew it radio, we have a variety of options for you to help keep the show going, get involved, and improve it. Also, every live show will have a giveaway for all our patrons, and at the end of each month, we'll be doing a monthly product giveaway for all our five, ten, and twenty dollar patrons. I'm Nigel. I'm Brandon. I'm Pete. I'm Sandra. <laughs> I'm Michael. I'm Mikey B. Hey, and I'm Stubby in the booth. <laughs> That's right. You heard right. Pete is back. Pete yeah. is back. Pete. Pete. <coughs> so we apologize. So sorry we cracked ourselves up so much in the intro there. I, you know, I I knew that was coming, and it still <laughs> got me. I couldn't even <laughs> begin my part of the intro. Uh, I'm sorry. No, no, not, I'm, but I, not. It's a good so, thing, no, that was a sorry to the Canadians. Sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but you're not though. <laughs> I'm sorry, Sarah. Liar. He's not Sarah. <laughs> All right. So as usual, we anyway. got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, I, I'm I'm pretty excited about a couple of the things we're going to do here. The others I'm not so excited about. The others are really crappy. But we got some a couple yeah, of good yeah, ones. All right. Go. Who's got Who's got volume up? <laughs> So as usual, we're starting off with some te technical difficulties here. I don't, I can't really hear myself at all. So um, you're not talking. I'm not talking. Okay. No, you sound great. Yeah. I can hear you guys, but so as long as I can hear that. So let's get into some recent happenings here. The first one we want to talk about is uh, Luckapalooza, and Mike and Sandra were out there for that. Why don't you guys go ahead and tell us what that was all about? And yeah, uh, Luckapalooza is an event that. Um, some friends of ours that I think they've actually been on the podcast, uh, the guys at Luck at Trinity times. Grove in, mm -hmm. in Dallas. They're great guys. Jeff and Ned over there are just wonderful guys. They uh, Twice yearly, they hold an event for up-and-coming breweries, guys that kind of want to go pro, that have that dream. Um, they do one in the spring. They do one in the fall. And the spring one's called Luckapalooza. So we were out there with eight other up-and-coming breweries, actually seven. One, uh, one guy dropped out. But we got to pour our beer. It's a, it's a festival of... Beer, music, friends, it's just, it, it's an awesome time. Um, yeah, we, so we, we were out there this past Sunday. We got to pour our beer for some people, got to sell some of our merch. We got some t-shirts, some stickers and stuff that we were able to give away. And just had a blast, poured beer. Got, uh, it's just a wonderful event, like I said. Uh, you had a nice lineup. What were you pouring? Oh, man, we, we had we had four different beers. Uh, we blew two kegs. Uh, we had uh, our Cinnamon Toast Crunch Cream Ale. We had a Honey Smoke Blonde. We had a brown ale that we totally jacked with. We added it's an English brown that we added uh, coconut, hazelnut, and cacao nibs to. And then what else did we have? We have a brewed IPA. I think that's the four. <laughs> so yeah, we we had four beers. Like I said, the cinnamon toast crunch we blew really quickly. People walk up and they see that and they're like, "Yeah, I gotta try that." We so blew, you, you actually have cinnamon toast crunch in that beer, right? Yeah, not, not just we, breast milk. We. we, we, we <laughs> We, we use a full box of cinnamon toast crunch in that mash, so it's <laughs> it's it's a really good beer. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a lot of fun, <laughs> and it's definitely one of those that that, that an event like that it, it's fun to pour because you see people walk up and they read like cinnamon toast crunch cream ale hold up, and you you get you can tell by the look on their face what they're going to order before they tell me what they want. So yeah, like I said, it's just a wonderful event. Um, they do it again in the fall, so uh, we look forward to to going out there pouring our beer and just. Uh, we were able to meet a bunch of people out there. I mean, it's one of those that a lot of the pros go to. Um, the owners from Legal Draft, him and his wife were out there. 
Cedar Creek. It, yeah, the, the owner, Jim, from Cedar Creek was out there. We um, hung out a lot with Hop Fusion. Yeah. Hop that, Fusion people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always J- cool people. <laughs> JD from Hop Fusion was dropping off a jockey box and wound up hanging out, drinking our beer for a couple hours. And just... Every time I turned around, there he was. I was like, <laughs> what do you want now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so like I said, it, it was uh, J-O-E, who's been on the show, I think, a time or two. He was out there performing. It's just a really great event. It's but what, yep. what started it is when they were yes. wanting to open Luck, a lot of their friends that owned restaurants after close would let them do a pop-up dinner kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And so they're wanting to pay it back, and they do that for breweries. That okay, like, okay, cool. Because there's really not a lot of opportunity to get your name out, and you need to get your name out for people to try your stuff and want to invest. And well, and I think that. in this format, you're not lost in a giant group of people either it's a manageable amount where you're able to really stand out it sounds like so and and, and that's the great thing about this event too is is it really gives you a chance to to sit down and just or not sit down but stand there and talk with people it's it's not so massive that that it's just nothing but pouring beer you know i'm able to pour my beer and talk to people when they ask you know so where what are you guys about where do you guys want to be you know and we're able to have that interaction you know we we went through a shitload of beer but we were also able to to talk to people and you know, kind of sell sell ourselves and sell Murphy's Law. So yeah. let me ask you this: Do you feel like you get valuable feedback at these kind of things, or is it one of the things where you know, there no one's ever going to say anything but positive stuff to your face? And <laughs> well, well, yes and no. You, yeah. you have <laughs> you have some people that think they know everything about a style, and they'll come up and tell you. We had a guy that came up and told us our brute was hazy and it's supposed to be clear. Oh, shit. Well, mm. that not true that style they haven't decided whether it's supposed to be clear or hazy so mm-hmm. it's fine but they thank you for your it. feedback <laughs> and continue the, drinking it enjoying it but so what sort of turnout was there attendance wise um three people we bought <laughs> four I heard. we bought um about a thousand cups and we went through at least 800 of them wow wow so, and good. a lot of them you're refilling the same cup so right. wow that's, that's great. great yeah so it, it really is it's a it, it's a big event and and you know at, talking about the feedback it, it's kind of one of those yeah you know for the most part except for the one guy that was like your brute's hazy and it shouldn't be everybody like to your face gives you really great feedback what right. i found was cool is my parents came out so walking to talk to them and stuff hearing people overhearing people talking you know hearing the people man that honey smoked blonde or that cinnamon toast crunch and i'm like oh shit that's my beer like cool like they don't know that i'm right here and they're giving me this great mm-hmm. feedback so it's 50 50 i mean you, you take it well for you what know it is and... in all fairness too i mean even if the guy is not necessarily textbook correct mm-hmm. on that you do learn this is something consumers might be looking for from right. the style yeah. you know yeah. if, if you're looking to yeah adjust it to to be you know ideal to sell to the public that, mm-hmm. that might be valuable in and of itself so and it's really interesting because I think there were 12 last year. Was it 12? Yeah, 12. And almost all of them have a building and are about to open or are getting much closer to the process. So this isn't just really intro homebrewers that one day want to have the dream. It's more people that are on their way mm-hmm. already. Yeah, I mean, la- last year um, the guys from Brutal Beer Works were out there. They are uh-huh. close to opening a building. Right. The guys next to us last year that, that they were out, out there again this year with Soul Fire. Funky um, Picnic was right behind yeah. us last year, and they're and about Funky to open right. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, they, these are really legit, you know, we're, we're kind of the exception. We're, we're the ones that are working towards that dream, and typically a lot of them out there are a whole lot closer to to that, that dream, uh-huh. you know, so. Very cool, very cool. I, yeah, yeah. I, I got to be honest, I've heard of Luckapalooza several times. I didn't realize that that's what the format was. Oh, it's a blast. Well, because <laughs> of TABC law and things like that, they're ha- it's having to be word of mouth they're not allowed to right, yeah. advertise hey we're pouring out here so. yeah well some people have ruined it for the ones that are doing yep. it right mikey yeah. <laughs> mikey did it yeah i, yeah. I don't take any blame for it blame so Canada. if you uh, you know if you're local or even with just within driving distance you know even in the, the four state area here and maybe want to make a yeah. weekend of it the the area where luck is and we've talked about this when we had luck on the show that trinity groves area there right there is fantastic i mean there's half a dozen absolutely fantastic restaurants in that place besides okay. just luck which in my opinion makes the best damn pastrami sandwich you'll ever eat in oh, my oh my god we've yes. never yes. eaten anywhere else because uh, yeah. It's, yeah. there's no other options yeah, yeah. Well, well, so. the, 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 this year after luck at blues talking about that we walked straight across the street to steam theory mm-hmm. uh-huh. who's a i've heard very good things about steam theory yeah great food the beer was really solid but the food was really great they had a lot of a lot of different beer they probably had what 25 
30 so. like they had a they ton had a of huge tap list. It, it, a, a great tap list in-house so we only got to try a couple things but the beer was solid the food was great manhattan project's gonna be opening up october 1st right down there what i've had of their it's, stuff is really oh, good yeah. yeah i can't remember where i've had i've you know obviously they're not open so i must have had it just at the some necessary the, they distribute yeah oh they do Man, yeah. Okay. Okay. Tap in, right. they can. Yeah, so I've liked all their beer that yeah. I've had. Yeah. So I could see that being a destination, like go get a hotel room and and you know just make. Well, a... actually, <laughs> speaking of that, that, that's actually what we did a couple weekends ago. Is we went to Dallas and we got a hotel room in downtown Dallas and hit up a lot of those breweries right there. And man, that's that was an awesome weekend. A bunch of great places to eat. A bunch of great, great beer. Yeah, yeah. There, so. there really is a pretty small area over there where you can hit a lot of stuff yeah a lot like downtown fort worth where you can get in near south side and hit a bunch of good yeah. stuff yeah yeah so. well cool so uh also we've got some uh some winners locally here for uh the the national homebrew conference uh, competition nhc to announce and we're just first round right now right we have first the, round. the second first round. round yeah so for the cap and hair our local club we've got carl king who you can kind of just put his name into any competition kind of sort of yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Brian Schoolcraft, same same thing. He's a perennial winner as well. Yeah. Stuart Maples, who is one of our star brewers in our club, uh, won he won Master Brewer last year. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 Stan Hudson, good friend of ours. James Lalonde, also good friend of ours, mm-hmm. and he's killing it in Mead. He's he seems to be winning everything in Mead these yeah. days. Yeah, and then uh, Greg and Nigel, of course. Yeah, yeah, we ended up with uh, four out of our ten entries placed. That's so that's pretty damn cool. good. Forty yeah. percent. Yeah. <laughs> Way to go, guys. Yeah. That's very good. Yeah, so we've got a Doppelbock, a Weizenbock that we discussed on the show and created on the show. Um, nice. The Doppelbock is going around here somewhere. It's um, really good. It's the, super drinkable. The Dark Mild we had earlier. And, oh, the the bit of the uh, Landlord. That's also made it through. Uh-huh, so. Uh-huh. so, probably very good. Rhode Island at the end of June is the final round, so we'll see what happens there. And then our, our other local club here, uh, Horseman of the Hopocalypse, uh, Stacy Myers and Jarrett Long made it through with a beer, and then Stacy Myers and Brian, Brian Schoolcraft, Schoolcraft, who's in both clubs, yeah. made it through as well. So that's that's pretty good. And I believe North Texas had at least one as well. Danny Kasurik, I think. Uh, okay. So North Texas Hungry Club. So there's uh, there's strong um, North Texas um, representation in the final. So that's cool. Very good. Very good. Sorry, Stubby, you didn't get any of the double bump. Mike, you drunk it all. I got the dregs, okay? <laughs> that is one of the most drinkable Doppelbox I've ever so, tasted what, before. So, so do, so, so do yeah. my... Oh, Sandra got a little clarity. But, uh, yeah, so that'll be good. We shall see what happens. All right, so back to a, a constant topic of conversation <laughs> for us in the recent <laughs> happenings. And I'm sorry if y'all don't like it, but I like talking about it, so we're going to talk it's about fun. it. It's fun. AB InBev. We got a couple of different things to talk about with them. The first one being another lawsuit... Uh, it seems like every time we have a show, there's another lawsuit associated seems that way, with doesn't it? I mean, yeah. Every time, I mean, it can sometimes be Miller Coors, but this one in particular, uh, from what I read about it, is one of the douchiest and most <laughs> most directly crooked things I've ever seen them do. So, uh, Patagonia, the clothing company, has filed a lawsuit against AB and Bev for a trademark infringement because they literally made a beer called Patagonia. With like mountain climbing logos and everything on the label, <laughs> and at their events they have like the the down stuffed jackets that just like Patagonia makes, and it's all like rock climbing themed and everything. I mean, they went wow. straight out of the Patagonia <laughs> marketing playbook and just made a beer out of it without ever asking them or or, or paying them any That's... rights or anything. Yeah, now <laughs> no, directly not... took their name. I mean. I'm not here to defend AB and Bev by any stretch, but it always seems as though somebody is taking a pot shot at them, and you always think, you know, is it is it legitimate? And and that was my impression when I first heard about this. When I read a bit deeper and learned a bit more about it, it's an absolutely like you say, the douchiest move they could have made. Well, I didn't read the the article, but I, I was looking at the the logo, and they've got like the mountains on the logo, and I'm like, that's the. It looks, freaking Patagonia logo. It looks it's legit. Out of Patagonia. I yeah. mean, it is it is one hundred percent exactly what they've used on T shirts for years. We're not talking about a brand new campaign. We're talking about a, a, a right. company that's you know really well old as company. dirt. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know, in the outdoor industry right now. Um, so and that's that's just really bold. You know like, what it well, reminds it's me of? Really bold or 
as in, um, well, we don't care. Or, right. or it's really bold in the case of we don't care. We're gonna. D- we're just gonna. We're just gonna do it. Like yeah. yeah we're not that we know about it, but we don't care. It's a case of we don't bother to do the research because we don't care. You know what it reminds me of is Ice Ice Baby, <laughs> which was so obviously a total ripoff of Queen and David Bowie's song. And he was like, "No, it's not." <laughs> And that was his whole defense, if I remember correctly, was yeah. no, it's well, not. Well, well no, I, I remember there was an MTV interview where he's like, and he breaks down the bass line, and his like had an extra tss to it. And he's like, that's the difference. And I'm like, dude, it's like the same. Like, he's yeah. like, but the bass line's like, da 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 da, you know, and like the, and the it's one so little, obviously like, the exact oh, yeah, same yeah. thing. And this is the same type of thing. Well, what's funny is that now, like, you know, th- that I've gotten older, uh, I'll hear it on the radio, and I'm like, which one is this? Yeah, like, you don't know which song you know, starts. Right, yeah. when, when it starts out, you're like, is this Ice Ice Baby or is this Under Pressure? Like, hold on, wh- which way am I going with this? So. It's one of those, when I saw it, if it had been posted on April 1st, I would have totally thought it was a right. right, right, yeah. Because yeah. it was so ridiculous. Yeah, you're, you're 100% right. So I'll be interested to see how that turns out, although we, we probably just won't hear anything about it. I bet they'll just stop making it and pay them some sort of settlement. And Well, yeah, because this is not some little guy that they can you know push away you know they can't pressure them i mean well i almost wonder if they think okay whatever legal fees and then we just stop doing it and pay them off is cheaper than people just keep talking about marketing it. right like, yeah people like, talk about it and they, yeah. they you know we sit here and talk about it right. weekly well what well, kind of a, on that same vein I, I follow a brewery out of um greeley colorado that's a uh, wiley roots <laughs> they did uh, a couple weeks ago they did wiley slushes and it was a slushy beer, but if you looked at their logo, it was Sonic's logo with <laughs> with, with Wiley with, with, with their lo- you know the Wiley over it, and and yeah, they got the C and D before it was released, but the the uh, uh, I saw it all over Facebook, just the amount of coverage that they the got, notoriety the, the notoriety, the yeah. notoriety, you know, people knew of the beer if they didn't know of the brewery, you know, right. they're is, like, is oh, wait, it worth I've it? Seen. Is the thing? Yeah. And it was one of those, they got a C and D and they stopped doing it, so you know, it was kind of a slap on the wrist. Like the Dilly Dilly beer, beer that yeah, 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 Budweiser was... sent the guy with the town crier, and right, everybody right. had a good laugh out of it. You know, and and I'm I'm I would be okay if that was the kind of thing that was happening. If it was tongue Funny, in cheek and 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 seeing Bud or Coors or Miller doing this, but also playing the 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 bad guy in a very lighthearted way, and say you know things like that. But when they're doing this, this, this is, is just... almost like if they made a Jeep. <laughs> Beer with a picture of a car on the front of it, you know, it's so directly a ripoff. It's it, so if you haven't if you haven't seen this, Google it real quick and look it up, and you'll see what we're talking about. It's worth a, a, a laugh. So yep. this next one is also to do with Budweiser. I don't know anything about this. Yeah, so no, I'll let just Nigel... some just some of I read is that uh, they are um, later in the year. I believe in July is the fiftieth fiftieth anniversary of the moon landing, and uh, it was faked. That may be the case, but it's fifty <laughs> years. It's a fifty-year anniversary of the fake. Then, in that case, um, Budweiser are launching a beer to commemorate that anniversary, and it is a uh, archive recipe, I believe, from the seventies. Um, and it's the the one cool thing about it Schlitz. is the one thing cool bit about it is it's being brewed by one of their brewmasters, who is a former U.S. Air Force captain, Carissa Norrington. So very cool. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. I mean, um, whenever they release something, it's uh, a little bit different. It's always a little bit of interest for us to, to try it out. So yeah, I'm sure we yeah. will. Uh, okay, and, uh, is it just me, or is, there, or is this just exploitive? The, one of their brewmasters, a former U.S. Air Force captain, shit, one of our customers at, at the shop that's a, that has a brewery out west of here is a current Air mm-hmm. Force uh, fighter pilot. So, I mean, to me, that's almost like they're exploiting the fact that she, you know, this person... And I'm assuming a she that that had a former military experience. Maybe that's just me, but well, I mean, it depends. I mean, there's two ways of looking at it, right? <laughs> they 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 could go for that angle, but they could also use that same angle in the positive manner. So, you know, I'd say fair play to them. Yeah, I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. But uh, all right, so, so that's, the, that's really all I know on that. Okay, that's enough. I think. I think so too. <laughs> So the new the new grandfather is an interesting yes. thing to talk about. Who uh, I guess Stubby could probably talk the best about this, right? <laughs> I was in the booth the whole time. I didn't even get to go see it. <laughs> I watched a little bit of the review, um, but the guy was so long winded that I just had to turn it off um, before he actually got to reviewing the product. 
Yeah, that was pretty but much. But it's how a new eighteen that. gallon grandfather, right? Yes, and I'm assuming this has to be two twenty. <laughs> it has to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I thought with so it, yeah, a lot of, or it's a thirteen hour brew day. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they've got to. I don't know how you would do that. At well, I, I've always said that I, the day I would consider buying a grandfather is the day they have one this size that's two twenty volt. You know, I I would rather it be two twenty. Well, and, and there had been some talk um, from our our rep uh, asking us, did, did we think there was a market for the two twenty? Oh, I do. Uh, five gallon. And we said absolutely. You know, hell yeah, for yeah. the five gallon. Even if yeah. I was going to buy five yeah. gallon and they had a two twenty volt mm-hmm. version, I would definitely yeah. buy that. You know, it's easy for me to say that now because I've got two twenty out in my shop. But even at my last house. I would have found a way to plug it in where my dryer plugs in. Yeah, if you're and, not using the dryer, you, you I mean, you could do a brew just day. Just for faster yeah. heating and, and yeah. all that. Yep. You know, it's just going to be a better element that's in there. It'll yeah. cut a lot of time <laughs> off the Nobody brew needs day. clean laundry. No. <laughs> well, I, I mean, plug that, the laundry well, back in afterwards. Well, it, it, and I mean, come on, let's be honest. Typically, your dryer just holds clean clothes. So <laughs> That's true, I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a place where you take clean clothes and let them wrinkle. <laughs> exactly. Right? Well, we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> so I'm really interested to see that. I don't know what the price point is on it or, or anything. I'm a little curious, you know, as to... Is it still the same type of situation where you're lifting the basket out? And it looked it looked very know. similar. It was a little it was a significantly heavy, larger diameter. Yeah. Yeah, um, that. I'm curious. Is it is it going to be something? Are they going to have a micro pipe works like the the current version, so you could do a five gallon batch in the ten gallon vessel? You know, or, or are you going to be able to do six to eight gallon batch easily? Right. Uh, things I, like I that. I bet you will. I bet you will. I, I'm curious about the sparge part of it too. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're talking about twice as much liquid now. Yeah. That's, that's a ton of. Sparge. I mean, are they gonna are they gonna yeah. do a, a a larger sparge buddy? Um, a larger sparger. You know, I mean, for your large sparge. Tell there's, them there's large sparge <laughs> sent you. <laughs> Yeah. What are you in talking Bo- about? In Boston, they do a large spadge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, they do it at me, yeah. <laughs> out, out where you park your car. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, this is where we need Pete on the mic. Yeah, that's right. Because I'm terrible at this. He's a lot better at this. Oh, wow. But yeah, I, I'm curious to see how that's going to evolve. And, and what yeah, all it yeah, entails. Yeah, it should be really good. I mean, they, they make a good quality product. I think the, what they released with the last one was really well thought out to begin with. And then they kept adding to it. So I think now, having had several iterations of the grandfather and really, or grandfather, the grandfather, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, learning what works and what doesn't and what people they're, want. They're going to release they're, the grandfather. The gran- <laughs> yeah, release the grandfather. Sorry, I am a grandfather. So. But, but maybe that's the name of the new big one, yeah, the maybe. grandfather. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. It's so, going to be the great grand- grandfather. The great <laughs> grandfather, yeah. <laughs> Uh. all right so on to the next thing uh stone brewing in berlin uh, yeah big shock there (laughs) yeah so uh a while back uh, what was a couple years ago stone started working on the facility in berlin you know one of the things i had always heard in interviews with with them and a couple other uh, breweries that were well known for really hoppy beers is that they were reluctant to export their beer to Europe and Australia is another one uh, just because it's not going to arrive in, in the right condition the same way, you know, their beers don't get here in the, in the right condition. And, you know, we have refrigerated transport here a little bit easier than they do there and that kind of thing. So they had opened up a, a, a pretty large brewery, I guess, in Berlin and they just announced that they're going to be pulling out of that. They're going to be turning the facilities over to BrewDog, and that they just could not support their vision. Basically, it was, it was unsustainable. Said. Yeah, the, the size that they started. With. I think they just went too big too soon. Yeah. is what it comes down to. Yeah, it was the location wasn't ideal either. You know, it was uh, pretty remote. There wasn't much. The else Germans around. don't like that craft shit. <laughs> well, and, you know, like Brandon said, it's it's a really good um, idea. I mean, that's why you see. Uh, some of the big breweries here in the U.S. Uh, opening multiple locations. That's why Sierra Nevada has uh, the, the locations in um, Asheville. That's why you have... Mm-hmm. That's uh, why New- Guinness is brewed over here. Guinness is brewed all around the world. Um, I mean, 
take it Budweiser's brewed all around the world, you know, Coors, Miller, they're, they're brewed all around the world so that their beer can get there and it tastes just like it does where it's from. So that's a great model, but you know, it sounds like they just, you know, they thought too way big, too big. I think they tried to do what they've got in San Diego and do that same mm-hmm. thing in Berlin. And it's a totally different beer scene. Uh, you know, San Diego can support something like that right. pretty easily where it's, you know, I think Stubby would agree that the craft scene in Germany is still in its infancy. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, and one of the things I thought was kind of funny is uh, when I was in Luxembourg, um, I guess it was about a year ago, we, we went to a craft beer bar in Luxembourg. And uh, the girl was really excited that we were from the United States that was serving us beer. And she she was like, hey, uh, you need to try this one. This one's from Oregon. It's fantastic. And, I mean, dude, it, when she poured it out, it tastes disgusting. I mean, it was so old and oxidized, but they thought it was amazing. There was, like, two or three people at the bar. They were like, oh, this is so great. And we're like, I mean, it was so bad. We, when they turned their back, we poured it out. I mean, it was. Well, I so, bet that's kind of what Greg Cock would, or Greg Cook. Greg Cock, Cook, yeah, Greg, Greg from Stone was counting <laughs> yeah. on was that imagine if they like this. Imagine when we get them something really yeah. good, yeah. you know, so, it'll probably explode. But so I'm thinking they were maybe thinking uh, they weren't very, making very good beer because what they're used to is old oxidized crap. <laughs> kind of the same vein when you get German beer over here. Although it's good here, it's not as good as when you're drinking it over there. What so. are we drinking here, Pete? That's a uh, black cherry mead. Oh, okay. It's fantastic. I, I, I couldn't figure out what I was beer, expecting. Yeah. And then I was like, ooh, that's really good. I, I was expecting this? beer thinking it would be uh-huh. shitty. No, I don't mean that. But. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our local friends, Wild Acre, who we've had here in here on the show, and uh, we com- we collaborated on a recipe. We're going to have them back on to follow up on that recipe that we wrote on the air, the agave lime, which I brought my version of it in. Theirs is completely different. They're going to bring it in. They are going to be opening up a second location here in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, in East Fort Worth, on the West Fort Worth. Yeah, it's West. I I typed you wrong. Oh, that's just great. The, the, Noggle. The the, 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 the the Brit doesn't know his. It's over his, his Camp Bowie, right? Worth. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's an old grocery store. Um, yeah, so I shouldn't even have read. I knew it wasn't East, and I read it anyway. Yeah, so yeah. I really have a hard time blaming that one on Nigel. Like so, they're actually going to have a pretty good sized facility to work with, but they're going to go like. They're gonna go brew pub. So you are wrong, yeah. Bug yeah. So they're they're, they're gonna have um, uh, they... their own their own they're gonna have their own beers brewed uh, specifically for that location. They're gonna brew on site, um, and they're gonna have a different menu beer menu than uh, their their standard core beers that are released in the uh, in the market. Well, and that's kind of like uh, again locally, uh, Deep Ellum Brewing, that, right? Uh, out of Dallas, they just opened up their. I think they're calling it the Funky Town Funkatorium. Funkatorium, they're, yeah. They're, they're Fort Worth, uh, Fort Worth location, and from what I understand, they're going to have, I think, six of their or four or six of their Deep Ellum staples from the Dallas one. But the Fort Worth one's going to have completely yeah, six gonna... or eight different uh, exclusive beers to them yeah. there. So, which I, which I really like. I, think I that's like a cool that idea. model, to be honest yeah. with you, because you know for distribution, you've got to have your staple the beers. Core, exactly. Your core beers, yeah. But, uh, you know, having another location that you can do smaller batches and play around with, and it, it just helps build your brand and keep you relevant and, and yeah. a well, place it, to draw from and get new ideas. Like, this is a home run. Let's put this into production. And, kind of and I think us here in Texas, what, it, what, what gets lost is that's very common on the West Coast. In California, in Oregon, yeah, yeah. to have, for, for a brewery to have three or four or five different, Location, you know, yeah. lo- locations what, where yeah. they're doing different beer at some of those locations. So th- this is new to... To the DFW and to this local area, but it's an old model. Yeah, and you know, there's so many things working. about that whole southern to Pacific Northwest, the, the whole West Coast beer scene that they do so right. Yes. I, I'm, I really wish we would adopt more here. You know, just the the standard brew pub where there's food, you know. Yeah. When we were in yeah. Portland for Homebrew Con, it was like, man, every single one of these brewers we went to had great food. I wish they did this at home. And it's... It, you know, it's really kind of the way brew pubs started. It's an odd thing the way we do it out here. But, well, you know, it sounds like that's yeah. going to be potentially the new the new model is I have a brewery in this location and I have a brew pub at my my other location. I think that's great. Well, that's and, great. and a lot of the reason though we're so far behind is we all know is Texas alcohol laws. 
right. yeah. or w- w- which are hoping to be changed here, you know, in this legislative legislative sl- session. But you know that that that's hampered. That well, you know, the actually, the only reason there's been any beer success at all is because of our <coughs> restrictive laws. Didn't you read the articles on the internet? Absolutely. <laughs> Restriction by government. Uh, is it, profitable yeah, for everybody it, it else. It props up right. businesses. It makes yeah. them grow. You oh, know. okay. That's completely opposite what I've, right. what I've learned. Well, so. that's what I thought, too. And then, and then I read what the distributors were telling me, and I thought, oh, distributors, you're right. <laughs> now, so. now, have, have you all seen anywhere? I, I've heard that um, some of the local uh, businesses have been approached by a distributor asking them to sign sign a, a, yeah. a, a pledge against the uh, yeah. the. Crap pack, basically. So, so w- for those of you yeah. not here in Texas that aren't beer nerding out on our local Texas stuff, <laughs> we're the only state in the country where breweries can't sell beer to go. In other words, uh, you go to the brewery and buy a six pack of their beer and take it with you when you leave. Uh, all, every yeah, exactly yeah. Every other state you can do it, and there's a bill in in our Senate right now or a House or whatever the Congress, whatever state Congress yeah, <laughs> that uh, that they're trying to make that happen. And so we've had a couple of people uh, come out and write articles recently on social media and just blogs and that kind of thing uh, talking about how the current three-tier distribution uh, system that, that limits this kind of thing is actually the reason that Texas breweries have been so successful and that it's really unfair to let them sell their own beer and it's just going to drive these poor, honest bars out of business you know, and, uh, it's the stupidest thing. I'm I'm pretty sure that there's a distribution system in other states. Yep. I'm pretty sure that bars still function in other states. Right. Just that it, when you're at the brewery or you drive by, you can go by and grab a six pack. You can yeah. buy a keg. You can you just you can skip that middle guy if you want to. Doesn't mean you have to. And it's not eliminating well, you know, the liquor the, store. It's not eliminating the bar. Right. And, and what a bar has an advantage is, you know, you go to a bar to drink beer, you're going to get umpteen different breweries. You go to a brewery's tap room, you're going to get just that brewery. So they offer two different things. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I'm sorry. If, if you're telling me that your business can't succeed unless the government artificially restricts competition and, and gives you an unfair advantage. Well, I guess your business probably shouldn't succeed. You're just not very good. And the, well, particular, and the particular chain in, in uh, the particular <laughs> chain of bars in uh, particular that was um, arguing against it, well, they sell the majority of their beers from out of state anyway. Well, yeah, and, yeah, and, and what happens this state is imports. states that do already have to. This is a, 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 so in the bar business, if you're not changing your, your, um, your your format you, you have to reinvent yourself every five to seven years to stay relevant and this is a bar that hasn't reinvented himself since they opened the only thing they've done is move a location and now have um a full bar so they have full liquor service um to and, be fair they've not had to it seems to be working pretty well for them. Well, well but they, they've, they've also closed, just closed yeah. they've closed multiple i i was a victim of of one of their closings and, and, um, and see i think now we're getting into kind of a different uh, a totally different article that that that's a whole nother can of worms right i don't want to specifically name i'm not yeah Yeah. that's why i'm not because it's but one of their i mean they've closed locations but they've also closed locations because they could not uh sustain the business model that they currently use based on the changing bar scene and and this is a, a person that's that's arguing against right uh selling craft beer out of a brewery um Yep. You have a different perspective on it, but you know you're actually wrong as well. Yeah. So, all right. Well, we danced yeah. around yeah. that subject, and, and yeah. that's what I think, so. Well, you know what I would say. I, I think they have the whole wrong attitude on that whole deal. Yep. Yep. Is because at the end of the day, when when you go into a place, and all you have is big macros and large uh, your beers or imports and stuff that everybody's had. Um, yeah, of course your bar business is going to die because yep. everybody wants the local stuff. And I think I've talked to other local bar owners, and, and I thought that they had the wrong attitude. And, and what I was saying is they're like, well, they're competition. They're competition. I'm not going to put their beer on tap. And I'm like, yeah, but if you can put all of them around you on tap, they might just go there and drink them all instead of having to go to five or ten different breweries. Yep. And, and, you know, really when you're talking about some of the consolidation we've seen now in, in the industry where – Brewers are being bought up by these conglomerates. 
you know, it gets to the point where you can buy from one major distributor and get a bunch of quote unquote craft brands. The same thing you see right. when you go to airports, ballparks, and Las Vegas, mm-hmm. any of that stuff, and act as though you've got. A, a legitimate beer lineup in a bar and then sit back and bitch about these breweries when you're not supporting anybody that's local to you at all. Yeah. I don't have any sympathy for you if, if that's the case. You know, Get out there and compete. We all have to go out and compete. You go out and compete and be successful in your business. And if your business model isn't successful, that's your fault. You know, I don't want to hear about it personally. Don't play the blame game. Right. Well, well, well and ultimately, the, this is just one of those instances where the company didn't didn't keep up with the local craft scene. Like, like you know... Because they didn't have to. Because, because they didn't, didn't have to. afforded an unfair advantage by, yep. by laws. Yeah. Right. Yep. Cool. All right. So let's move on from that self-righteous little <laughs> rant of mine. I'm going to need Anybody this. Anybody have any beer week to talk? Or beer week? Beer, beer week. week. Jesus. Beer week. beer week this work? Words hard. <laughs> I, I, brewed, uh, I brewed an English pale ale with rye um, at the weekend. So we'll see Imagine that. that you, you brew an English beer. I know, that, right? Right. Well, I brewed a I brewed a Maybach again. Is that Mikey Bach? No, no, it is. It's no, Mikey Bach. No, this is this is Maybach. Let's talk yeah, about that because I don't think we have that. In we didn't put it in here. here. Yeah, yeah. And I but, wanted to talk about that because it was a decoction brew. Well, it did yeah. So I did a decoction. Um, it was about two or three weeks ago. Um, let, let's and start at the beginning with that. Let's talk about what a decoction is and what kind of decoction you did and why you did it and all that. Uh, so decoction brewing is is a pretty old method. A lot of uh, people will tell you that because of the malts that we have today and as well modified as they are that you don't need to do a decoction brew. Certain styles, right. there are some people that will swear by them. Brian Schoolcraft, who we mentioned when we were talking about competition wins earlier we mentioned his name several times he will swear up and down to you that it makes a difference and his doppelbach well, is james, pretty outstanding james so. lalonde um likes to do a, a a single decoction um and his is at the that's what he uses to raise it to mash out um, he so, does that in almost all his lagers so what a decoction is is basically you're going to pull a portion of the grain out not not the liquid the grain and you're going to put that, well, some liquid, obviously. It's not just grain, but it's mostly grain. Well, you're going to try and leave yeah. the liquid behind. That's where your enzymes are. So you're, 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 the, the whole purpose of it was, you know, we got this is an ancient style of brewing uh, before we had temperature control, before we, we had... Before they had thermometers. Before, before yeah. we had thermometers. You knew that boiling water or boiling a liquid could raise the temperature. So this is a method of essentially doing a step mash without adding direct heat to the mash tun. So uh, I did a, a triple decoction. So I did three different decoctions. And when you do that, you're starting with about a third of the volume in your mash tun. And you're, you're pulling, pulling out. out. It's, the echo gets worse. Yeah, oh, it's, wait, now it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. Now it's better. So the decoction is when you pull yeah. the grain out. And, and by the way, that's perfect. Yeah. Perfect. When you, you pull the grain out, put it into a separate vessel, and you boil you that You boil grain. that. So what you want to do, um, you're pulling, um, I think I pulled about a gallon each time. And I pulled about a gallon of uh, grain. And, and you're going to get liquid with it, obviously. But you're pulling uh, as, as the thickest you're, portion of the, of the mash as you can. And you're, the idea is you're going to heat that to your uh, whatever temperature you want for the enzymatic reaction. So about 153 degrees. And you want to hold it there until you have some conversion. And then you boil it, and you boil it for about 20 minutes. And the whole time, you got to sit there and stir it because you don't want it to scorch. But the one of the things we're looking for is we're looking for that melanoidin uh, formation. We're looking for that Maillard reaction. And that is the reaction of sugar binding to amino acids. So that is when you sear a steak, when you brown um, meat. Um, that and a lot is what's of the time formed. When we're talking about caramelization in brewing. We're actually referring to the Maillard, the Maillard reaction yeah. because in, in many cases, whatever you're doing doesn't get hot enough to be true caramelization, and it's actually right. Maillard. And that's that's what we're looking for. So breweries that that have evolved to you know steam jacketed uh, mash tuns where they can easily raise the temperature. There's now grain out there called uh, melanoidin malt that will give you those same flavors without having to do decoctions. So 
So, but, but let's take a step backwards real quick right. and just and finish explaining what this is, this is. So you start at a temperature, you pull out this grain, you pull boil it, you put it back into the mash. And that will raise. And when you do that, that raises, raises the temperature. Your temp. So you could do your protein rest, pull a decoction, put that back in to your sacrification right. rest, pull a decoction, put that back in up to your mash out temp. Right. You, there's, so there's double, triple, single uh, decoction, and the, all that. But the main reason they did it back in the old days, it wasn't to get those flavors. It was because the they malt was so crabby. Right. They, they did right. not have well-modified malt like we have today, and that's yeah. why people will tell you. There are people out there who will say there is no reason to do a decoction mash anymore, and there are uh, others I, who will say. I, I think there's no reason to do it. Right. I think and it's it's a waste of time. And the reason I say that is uh, maybe you can do a longer boil and get a little more decoction or maybe get a little more of those melanoidins or whatever. But uh, the problem is, is, is number one, if you're doing it for a step mash, well, forget that because it doesn't do any good anymore. Because if you look at most of your malts, if you have a, a way to test if your, your enzyme reaction is done already, m- most malts are done in 30 minutes nowadays. Yeah, yeah. So if you're doing a step mash and you're coming in, oh, I'm mashing in at 98 degrees and I'm going to raise it up to 104, 12, and then 140, it's done before you get to those steps. Yeah. So... Uh, that I think that's the biggest problem that. Well, that how you can have. it be done? How can your sacrification be done at? Because at all the sugar's degrees. been converted. At 112 degrees? No, I'm just saying when you when you're getting up to into the the into the the uh, alpha and beta amylase enzymes. Once well, you see, reach that, that range, but that's one of the it, it, advantages I would think is that it's a very fast temperature raise. So you would go from if you want to do say like a beta glucan right, protein if you wanna, rest, you almost have to bring it like, to a boil though. At like 112. It's and actually pull a decoction. It's you actually put, not fast. It's slow as hell. Once you put that back in, it raises the temperature pretty quick, right? Because it's boiling. Yeah, but you've even got if it. you take a third of the mash, it takes a long time to heat that third of mash up. Even and you have to stir it the whole time too. Yeah, because you want you want that third of well, the mash to as convert. As I understand it, though, the principle behind it is that when you pull the the grain and not the and because the the big question is if you're going to boil this, aren't you denaturing? All of the enzymes, because you you would be denaturing any enzymes that are in that decoction at all, because you're you're boiling it. Well, that's why you want to you you, you essentially want a thick mash and, and, you, and you want the liquid behind and you because, want it to yeah. you want it to convert. You put it you pull it to 153 degrees, and let it let it convert, then you boil it. Well, that's if that's your first step. You're starting. Uh, that's your first step, yeah. and in the meantime, you could have your main portion of the mash that you need to be sitting for. This this is that pit, the pitfall that that um, it's a longer a much longer brew day than than yeah than I've needs heard to it's, be. it's an hour added per decoction easily yeah yeah you're, you're and, and be I mean they're not even doing that in Germany anymore no and to me this was just I, I had a day off um, I've always so wanted to try this I, I'm I'm going to spend my day off brewing I might as well just have some fun mm-hmm. um, and see what I could do. It does smell amazing. Doesn't Rabbit Hole <laughs> do a, a beer with a decoction? There's a no, local no, brewery no. that does a decoction on one of their beers. I, it's very tough to do it in yeah. a br- brewery. I don't know how yeah. they would Unless remove. you have a brewery set up to do the decoction. Y- yeah, yeah, you have to have a different type of pump that will pump a mash instead y- yeah. of just liquid, and you have to have a separate vessel to do it and all, all right. that. Yeah. There's someone locally that and does one. And I you need, you need something is. like, a, what do they call it, a, a peristaltic pump. You know, Yeah, yeah, that will actually pump. Mash. Affluent, it's like yeah. a trash pump, basically, right. as opposed to right. like just like a liquid pump. Yeah. So, so at any rate, so what was your experience in in doing this? Um, <laughs> it was a long day, and I even didn't do as long as I should have. Um, the gravity was significantly lower. Um, what do you attribute that to? I just didn't get full conversion, and, and I I tried to rush a um, long process. Oh, there you go. Well, you probably um, killed all the enzymes. <laughs> that, well, I, you know, I I didn't I didn't give anything. I didn't give each step enough time prior to the decoctions. Oh, well, um, there you go. And and I I kind of knew I was doing that, but um, I don't remember if the weather was rolling in or 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 what was going on. But I I tried to rush it. Um, but it was it was just for fun. Um, and I mean the beer turned out pretty good. It it do you have it, some here? That's what. That's what well, this we're is drinking. what we're that's drinking. That's passed around. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, I like it. So it's a really light. I. Uh, that's exactly right. It is a a, a really light Mybach. It's uh, gosh, it's it's almost like a like a an imperial pilsner. 
you know, just a little yeah. bit higher gravity Pilsner. It's got a really nice spicy hop character to it. I think my favorite part about a Maybach is the hop character in it. Mm-hmm. And you hit the hop character. And it's, killer. Ju- you know, it's just Magnum. It's it's Magnum for is bittering, that it? and really? that's it. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, I was even wor- worried that um, it might be a little too bitter, but I think the bitterness is, is oh, pretty good. Oh, I think good. it's just fine, yeah. This is really good. I get a lot of grainy sweetness mm-hmm. from it, which yes. to me, yeah, I don't get bitter at all. I get the grainy sweetness. <coughs> It's got enough Maybe. bitterness to balance it out, but I think yeah. I would say the balance is a little bit towards the malty side, just a yeah. little bit. I mean, like it should be. It's got a lot of hot um. flavor to it, and I think that kind of helps mute some of the the malty sweetness to it. Or it would be too yeah. much, you know. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's I'm not too much. I, I I like it, but I'm not that's displeased. The first thing that <laughs> yeah, came no, you're right. That's really the, good. The grainy mm-hmm. sweet. I get a, I get a tannic, a little tannic like husky uh, yeah, flavor. Yeah. Um, I I wonder if that has to do with the the boiling. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I, and not 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 in an off-putting way. It's right? Not, not, no, it's I, not astringent, but I do get a little like grainy it's huskiness. Absolutely husky. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's got to be due to I boiled, you know, three times I boiled grain. Yeah. Well, really, two times I boiled a lot of grain. <laughs> um, but you know, oh, it's it's a more? it's oh, a right. fun method. Um, you can make some some decent beers with it with that method. Um, one of the easiest thing to do if you want to do some, a decoction, uh, James Lalonde is a big fan of um, raising his mash temperature to mash out by a decoction. So at that point in your third, that would be what would, would be referred to as the third decoction. And at that point, you're just pulling out the liquid from the mash. Okay. Boiling that. that and then adding. Why wouldn't you just do your first runnings, boil it? Same. It would basically be the same thing. Okay. Yeah. Right. You. You. You really wouldn't need to to ladle it out. You could just, you know, run and, and out. And then when you put it in competition, you get uh, diacetyl. Yeah, because <laughs> people can't tell the damn difference between caramelization and diacetyl. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That's why I don't enter my scotch ale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I've I've done that on uh, I've done that on landlord. Uh, pulled out a gallon and boiled the snot out of it before I yep. filled the kettle. One of my favorite IPAs I ever brewed, I actually did that. I did 100% Maris Otter, and I pulled off the first two gallons of a 10-gallon batch and boiled that down to a syrup and put it back in instead of using any crystal malt. Mm-hmm. I actually really like that. Yeah, I would that's kind of what... It's, yeah, it's what you the, did with your version of Landlord, right? Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. It, uh, I think I would equate it to like a crystal tin mm-hmm. kind of effect on it. Yeah. It's a real light uh, caramel flavor. Added in there, uh, it doesn't overpower anything, but just kind of gives a little bit of depth and sweetness to it. Nice, yeah. yeah. So it's it's fun. Um, the beer's good. It's drinkable. I really I mean, like it. Yeah, I'd good. drink the shit out it's of this. Nice. The it's fermentation on it is super clean. Your lager <laughs> fermentations are are so I, awesome. And this is uh, number three on. Um, the third two, youth, third two, youth. two packs of uh, 833, and this is the third batch with it. Nice. nice. It's really good. Yeah. So. But it, but like you say, it's drinkable. I mean, the drinkability is huge on it. What it, it, It's sub-5%. Five, right. sub five um, so you're probably on. right at 5%, I would it's think. It's right, right there. Yeah. Nice. So um, what, since we're kind of drinking a German beer, when we, were, we just got back from uh, Austin and I just got back from CBC, which was – that was a lot of fun. Uh, w- my two favorite breweries out there in Denver uh, that that I enjoyed the most was uh, uh, Prost, which they make some really good German beer. Even the Germans that I took there liked it, so th- I thought that was a pretty good kudos. And then uh, we also went to uh, Bierstadt, uh, which uh, they have uh, the Slow Pour Pils out there. You got to give mad props for that one. That's that's the best beer I had in Denver for sure i've heard of that slow pour yeah. pills before yeah it was more like a 25 minute pour pills but <laughs> uh you know we we eventually got it to drink it and it was it, it was it was the most pretty beer you've ever seen it looks like an ice cream cone man with a, a like really uh, yeah it was it was really awesome so huh. anyway it's actually 6.3 percent abv because mm. this has been really? attenuating pretty oh, okay. low okay yeah I'm getting it out, getting it down to like uh, ten oh five, ten oh six. It's nice and yeah. dry and drinkable, yeah. Yeah. 
They All do. right, very cool. So let's get to uh, unsolicited answers to internet questions. We only have one this week because we'll see. And, and actually, online we've got one from one of our favorite listeners, Aaron oh, Rodgers. Great. There you go. So, so I suggested we do a solicited question. There we go, for, solicited question. And, Bring it and, on. And his question is: Do you always do a mash out at one seventy? I switched from a three tier system with fly sparge to an electric brew in a bag system. I don't sparge now. I just recirculate during the mash. Should I raise well, it to one seventy for ten minutes after? I mean, Technically, he said, I recirculate during the mass. Or during the, oh, uh, well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's Catholic. But, <laughs> <laughs> but should I raise it to 170 for 10 minutes after mashing? It's basically his question. So I think that you'll find a lot of varying uh, opinions on this. My personal opinion on this is that I do like to do the mash out. Yes. I think it makes a difference. I think uh, I get a little bit better efficiency. My sparge is a little bit better. And I think it helps with your consistency. If you're brewing the same beer over and over again, you're stopping the enzymatic conversion mm -hmm. at a particular point. And the next time you brew that beer, you're going to stop it at that exact, exact same point, point again. Mm -hmm. And if your sparge is different from time to time, it's not going to matter because, boom, you've denatured your enzymes in your beer. Right. So uh, personally, I am a fan of the mash out. And, and what it does is it actually it actually makes your mash thinner. Yeah. Right. Uh, it, so if, you know, if I'm not mistaken, I, I, am, I, am, I, am I thinking right? I, I'm sticking out my ass right now it's it makes the beta glucans thinner if, if is that what it was is that makes it thinner well it's but i know it makes the mash drain easier you're, you you got to think the mash is a sugar yeah, solution a yeah so if we heat a sugar solution yeah. it, becomes, it becomes less viscous it becomes less viscous right, yeah. so it's easier to drain and that's that's what we're doing in the sparge is, is we're draining the mash ton and the thinner that mash can be during the sparge the more of the sugar you're going to get out of that grain and in over into yeah. your boil kettle. And see, now there there have been studies, and I'm talking about legitimate studies, not uh, crazy internet blog studies. There have been legitimate <laughs> studies that have shown that Wait, what? that 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 solubility of the sugars at that temperature is not that much different or whatever. Right. My personal experience has been that there's a big difference, but particularly when I was batch sparging. Right. When I was batch sparging, I thought I found it to be. Uh, very different if I, you know, you drain off your first batch, then you fill your mash tun back up. If I got that up to, uh, for, for my second batch, if I got that up to 168, 170, and let that sit for 10 minutes, I, I had better efficiency. I just did. And I, so I would just go by what I've experienced. I went from coolers and really no ability to, to raise temps, um, to a, a, a single tier three vessel, I can raise temps. I can, mm -hmm. um, and I, I do a mash out every time. And I think the beers are much easier to sparge. I get, uh, I think a it better, makes a difference. Yeah. I get a better sparge. I get, I get more wort into the kettle. Um, it's just easier to do if you have the ability to raise that temp and let it sit for 10 minutes. And as a matter but, of fact, he's talking about doing a brew in a bag. I would think it would be even more important in a brew yeah. in a bag. Yeah, you know, e even uh, in a cooler, I th it's it's very possible to do. In a cooler, it is. you're batch sparging. So the way I used to do this is I would run off all my first batch, and then you're going to refill your, your mash tent, basically, to run off your second batch. And what I would do is I'd keep my water up about 190 or so, keep it real hot, and I would fill that, until, not by volume, but by temperature. I would refill okay. it for the second batch until it hit 168 or 170, not based on how full it was. And when I did that, I, I found that my efficiency improved by, by several points. I well, was a big believer in that. And, and Drew and Denny, um, I think it's in their Experimental Brew book, they talk about um, there, there's the worry that if you, you know, if you heat your sparge too, too much, you're going to pull tannins. Um, according to, to Drew and Denny, their research and their experiments, as long as your pH is yeah, correct. That is, that's much more of a function yeah. of it pH. Doesn't, it, it has no difference. As long as you're under 200 degrees, and I think it's maybe 190, um, but I, monitor your pH. I'm telling you, the way my system is now, I sometimes I get up over 170 yeah. when I sparge just on I, accident, I, and I don't have an issue. With I it. set my uh, hot liquor tank at 172 uh, when I go to the mash out. So if See, if I'm at like 190 on my on my hot really? liquor tank, yeah, uh, and and so my grain bed will get up a little bit above 170 sometimes. I only have one, like, I well, I, I've got the electric system, so i got about two degrees difference. But I'll let it sparge at 172 the entire time, and I, I don't, well, I see, don't I, have I that I do worries. kind of a hybrid batch fly sparge because I can oh, okay. never get my flow rates the same. <laughs> so I just, 
what I'll do is I'll fill my mash tun up with water. Uh, so there's a just you know a layer of water on top of it and let it drain and as it goes down by an inch or two then I'll refill it again and so I'm constantly draining it I'm not doing right. a batch sparge but I'm also not constantly filling it I'm filling it letting it drain filling it letting it yeah. drain and so Kenny Adams is asking is 170 the norm temp for mash out Grandfather uses 167 I know it's only a couple of degrees but do those couple of degrees matter 168 is traditionally the right. number that you hit yeah. 168 i i don't above think 168 and you've got mash out yeah i, I mean i i don't think that a, a degree or two in either direction is a big difference right. we'll see and, and aaron also followed up here he said he brewed our uh the tbi dunkel and didn't mash out but he missed my gravity points uh, missed his gravity by six points so that that could be the the non mash out you talked about efficiency drops. No, so there, there there's several different well, things. Well, that, 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 yes, there, yeah. but uh, <laughs> I don't know about those six points. I mean, six points you're pretty dang close. Yeah, six on points that beer. The, in my experience, the first thing I would look at would be your mash pH before I would yeah. start looking at any of the other things. That my experience has been that that's had a much bigger effect on my efficiency than than uh, sparge temperatures. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's get the uh, let's get the Reddit question there, Brandon. All right, you mean the uh, the internet question? <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the, yeah. So I pulled this one question because not so much because uh, I like the question as much as I really like the answer. Yeehaw! Oh boy, Eric's back. <laughs> so this is this is one of them where I read it and I thought I knew the answer to this, and when I read the answer, I thought, okay, I didn't really know, and this is really good information. So the question is. Just wondering if gelatin affects gravity readings with a hydrometer. I did an Irish ale, which started at 1052 and should have finished around the 1012 to 1014 mark. First time using gelatin, my final gravity was 1002. This is well below what expected. Um, I also swapped out like yeast. 1002? 1002. So, is so it, not 1020? Wondering, just wondering if the gelatin pulled yeah. enough crap out of the solution to throw my gravity readings from an ABV standpoint. Now, if you would have asked me in the past if hot matter... I'm still confused on this. 1002. 1002. Yes. 1002. That would be... Po that's like dry as shit. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 10 points low from where he was <laughs> yeah. looking to hit. Yeah. So if... It's prior, possible. Prior to reading this, if you would have asked me if having hot matter or protein or any of that stuff in there made a difference... Maybe maybe protein's a bad example, but hot matter or yeast or, or something like that, something that's in suspension. Any kind of particular. I would have said that I thought it made a difference. Well, and I understand, I, I can understand that thought. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Why you because, would think that? You know what what you're reading is basically the density of the liquid. And right. I would have thought that particulate in suspension like that would have affected the density of the liquid. But the answer to this question that uh, that I, this that is I thought was really yeah, right up. I'm just going to read this word for word. Um, I actually should have made a note of who who answered this question and give them credit. Plagiarism. It's not me, but gelatin, Plagiarism. gelatin doesn't pull things out of solution. It pulls them out of suspension. Think of it this way. If you have some water with sand in it and the sand is settled to the bottom and you take a hydrometer reading, now you stir up the sand so it's in suspension and take another gravity reading. These two readings should be identical because the sand isn't affecting the hydrometer. It's only the water that is floating the hydrometer, and the sand around it doesn't affect it. The proteins, hot particles, yeasties, and other solids in your beer are acting just like the sand in comparison. They're just floating around in your wort and beer. They aren't dissolved into the liquid. Conversely, the sugar in your wort isn't in suspension. It's bonded to the water on a molecular level. In other words, it's in solution. And so that's what your hydrometer or your refractometer is reading is how many uh, uh, particles are in solution and not in suspension. And that's a really important distinction to make, I guess. Right. And so that's what I really liked about this question is I thought I knew what I was talking about and I didn't. And I really learned something from it. So I thought that was a good one. That would be a hell of a test to try. I don't know how you would do it. Well, I've often wondered, you know, like if you're brewing an IPA. Right. And and you're at the end of your brew day, and you pull off a hydrometer reading, and it's full of hops mm -hmm. and shit in there. Is mm -hmm. that affecting it? Am I getting an accurate hydrometer reading? Well, you and can so with with just carbonation can affect it as well. Carbonation well, in your beer can affect your, your has, reading. Has to do more with floating the yeah exactly yeah, yeah. But I always thought you know a bunch of hops being in suspension mm -hmm. in the beer mm -hmm. would make a difference, and 
They don't. Okay. And so I thought that was a really uh, good piece. Well, of that's what I was saying. I, th- I think that would be a kind of a neat, maybe we could just take some yeast and stir it into one test tube on a finished beer and one test it side by side. Yeah. yeah. See, you know, p- see what happens. I don't know. I may not. Well, it might, might, well, see, you'd have to almost have to have a, like a, I don't know, you couldn't have any, add any water. Maybe you could pour some dry yeast in it and let it reabsorb. Because you can't add water because that would affect the gravity. Right, so. yeah. Yeah, you can't add water. <laughs> but I wonder if you could just add some extra yeast in there. I mean, some dry yeast, maybe a half a pack or quarter pack or something in two test tubes and, and test it. I'm yeah, that'd be pretty to easy see. to do. Yeah. yeah, I'm just curious to see if it would do anything. And then maybe do add hot pellets in the, into one of them, let them dissolve. I, and I think the hot pellets like one <laughs> would be easier to do. Yeah. It would be the same right. basic principle, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So anyway, uh, uh, we just had somebody... Where the hell is Kanukistan? Canuck? Uh, Kanukistan? <laughs> <laughs> He's a Canadian. <laughs> oh, okay. Canucks? I've been, to, I've been to Nookistan. I think before, it's just but, north you know. of North Dakota, right? <laughs> 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 anyway, all right. All right. Well, so um, we've got Nigel's beer, but we're, we're going to briefly chit chat real quick. Do you want to talk the, the water real quick? or? Uh, yeah, we can do this while we pass yeah, it out. While so, we're passing. so just so you know, I'm going to pass out two samples one's A, one's B. Sample them as A and B. Um, don't get them mixed up. And uh, the first one I'm going to pass out is A. This is our um, dry hop to pellet hop uh, experiment, or my dry hop to pellet hop experiment on our... Uh, you mean wet hop. Sorry, wet, wet hop. hop. Yeah. Sorry, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, just, to, just to give you guys kind of a, a uh, unique perspective of this. So uh, I went to uh, Germany for the hop harvest last year, and... Uh, uh, this we met this gentleman. His name is um, Martin. Golly, I can't remember his last name. But he's uh, o- uh, over in the Holotile region, and uh, he's come up with a new way. So the idea is is when you have uh, you know hops, um, the idea is is when you use like what typically what they do is when they pull them off the vine, they immediately you know dry these hops and this the reason being is because they spoil really quickly this one is b coming around now <coughs> but the uh the the rub is 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 that when you dry this you lose all the essential oils that are all the aromatics in the oil so uh the idea is is by using a wet hop directly off the vine you get more aroma right so um the I hit, see he's figured out a way to put put these wet hops in cans and uh, I think uh, five kg foils and uh, uh, but kind of interesting uh, uh, product. Right, yeah. uh, like I know you, you cans. you've tried some, haven't you, Mikey? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're gonna try mine after this. Okay, yeah. that'd be great too. Uh, so th- w- this is not avail. Uh, it's available for sale for commercial breweries now. Uh, if you're a commercial brewery listening to this, uh, you can uh, get that. Um, but, uh, anyway, try them, see what you think. Uh, I, I think we can't really probably put a, <coughs> a, uh, yeah, we're not going to know the actual results probably or how well these work until we actually do multiple experiments. But yeah, uh, this is just a, a dot of, <laughs> this is just a dot of data. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, but anyhow, yeah. um, so, um, tell us your usage that uh, on that. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> so I brewed I brewed a Kolsch. I mashed in uh, ten gallons of wort. I split it into two. I um, uh, mashed out, filled a ten gallon uh, vessel, um, and then split it into two separate uh, boiling vessels. The wort was exactly the same um, gravity in both, and I brewed I boiled them separately. Um, one of them you will see is noticeably darker than the other, and I, I put that down to the boil. Um, they were hopped exactly the same, with one exception, and that was the flame out hops. Um, on um, on one we used uh, I used Halotog Blanc pellet hops, and on the other one I used uh, Halotog Blanc um, wet hop. I used it on a three to one ratio, three ounces of wet hop to one ounce of uh, pellet hops just to account for the extra water weight right now if you now we've had the uh, advantage of reading the spec sheet from uh, the manufacturer or the producer shall I say they they suggest a one-to-one ratio uh, I did three to one 
Um, so that might account for uh, because I get a definite difference in these two. There books. is there is yeah. a definite mm-hmm. difference, and I'll be interested to see what 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 people's thoughts are before I reveal which one's which. <laughs> okay, so A, I feel like uh, there's less aroma, mm-hmm. but there's more flavor, and, and there's also the, a bit of a green vegetable flavor to it. Yes, I don't get green vegetable in from the first A. One? Yeah, in A, yeah. A, A, I don't know which one's one. A, I get very. Uh, I agree with you, Brandon. I get that vegetable-y kind of. Just hoppy. a little bit. It's not yeah. unpleasant. It's just a little bit more than. And I get the vegetable on get. the on the second one. Oh, see, to me, B. B was very clean. Yeah. And, and you sure you don't have them mixed up, Mike? I'm going to say just to help, the darker one is A. Yeah. The darker I, one yeah, is I A. I put yeah. the first one you gave me here They're and the not second that one you gave me there. Almost get some honey from it from A. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I get like almost like a fruity kind of honey character yeah. on A. And you know what? B That's a good point. It seems yeah. more like dank. It was your the, point, B, the aroma. Yes. <laughs> that was the Are y'all drinking different beers than I am? No. <laughs> Maybe I got them mixed up. I don't know. A, a, a is the darker one. That's no, I agree with you on that. You I me? agree with you. There is a little bit of honey and, and um, a, is a little bit of fruitiness mm-hmm. to okay. A. Yeah. Um, I think that both of them are a little bit more bitter than I would expect. Mm-hmm. Too. Okay. They don't have the grainy. Well, the, the bitterness of it was just a straightforward. Um, bittering edition f- on both, so I, I well, but you I put them out of flame out, right? I and put so uh, yes, yeah. that's right. Yeah, so we don't know the alphas on the wet hops, exactly. and there is some extraction. Right. Yes, so yeah, that's true. Or some isomerization. Um, but actually, we do know now. Well, we know a range. It's one to eight. Cheap wheat. Uh, no, Chris actually posted them. Yeah, it was a range. It still said one to eight. Did it? It didn't That's say a r- big range. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> say. <laughs> unless unless there's another another sheet that I didn't see. I believe there is. It said okay, alpha so range one percent to eight percent. Well, that yeah, that's all close enough. <laughs> you want to know my opinion? Th- those beers are completely different. Mm-hmm. The more I drink them, the more I agree with you on that. The yeah. first one is not as dry. Mm-hmm. It, it's not as dry. A, a was the first one. I'm sorry. It's yeah, alpha the darker acid. One. The darker yeah. one. Yeah. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. To After me, that. A was a little more fruity. It had a little more a little honey. More fru- yeah. It, mm-hmm. it, it, On the direct link. It didn't finish as dry. To one point two. More like a pale ale kind of yes. flavor. Yes. Yeah. Whereas B was a little more dank. It was a little more bitter. It, to me, it was more like an IPA. Hmm. Just. Hmm. Just. Okay. Oh, I, saw that. I would think more like an IPL, really. It does have that well, lager crispness yeah, to yeah, it. it you know? yeah, yeah. And that's definitely what I got with B. Is To me, B was a lot crisper, especially yeah. on the back very, end. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like very yeah. crisp, very clean. Yeah, so so for me, this right this is, this yeah. is very – this reminds me a lot of Kolsch's that, that I like in Germany. Yeah. The 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 B. The B, yeah. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. yeah I would and agree. And to me, it has a really a clean, a nice bitterness. You uh, don't think it's a little bit too much on the bitterness? No. no. Okay. And so one of the things you'll find when you go to Cologne um, is that you'll find that they ha- there's 27 breweries that make Kolsch mm-hmm. uh, in Cologne. So you'll find, I mean, it they are they're all different. They there's go a from pretty the very, wide range. They okay. go from the very sweet to pretty damn bitter. Okay. I mean, and, and, and as a matter of and, fact, and I wouldn't call this pretty damn bitter. I, yeah, I would this, just say this, a little bit on the bitter side as well. So all. if you've ever had Gaffel Kolsch in Germany, it's more I bitter. I think he brought it, us back some Gaffel. It's, it's more bitter than this. Okay. Yeah. So it's quite intense. So I, 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 Germany. yeah, so <laughs> the, uh, I, I think that, uh, I, I, th- I think that this is well within the style this one. And I think it's actually a pretty damn good Kolsch to be. I do. Yeah. I like it. I like so I like both of them. No. Yeah, uh, I do. I do agree that, that with Sandra though that the first one has, has leans a little bit more towards like a pale ale, just because it's got a little bit fruitier, rounder mm-hmm. feel to it. And if I had to guess, I would say that's the wet hop one. I would have said otherwise. B is the wet yeah, hop. I think B is the wet hop. I, I would think B is the wet hop. Yeah. Oh, see, and, see, and I, I, see, I'm I would expect you, Brandon, get, I, I would uh, expect to get more of that vegetal flavor from uh, from, from the, the wet, wet hop. hop. Yeah, that, that's where I'm yeah. at too. I, I think the wet hops a. So, who, I, so I, who's I, right, Nigel? I like <laughs> Let us. I get again. vegetal from the second one. I like them both. They're both good. Yeah, both they're both really good. Both of them. I like both these coals. <laughs> A is the red, wet hop. Yep. Woo-hoo! That's right. High yeah. five across the table. Yeah. So <laughs> to me, to me, the re- this doesn't have the same hot bitterness. It doesn't have the same crispness. It doesn't have any of the, mm-hmm. um, you know, it doesn't have any of that. the the characteristics that you would hope to get. I think from a- aroma. 
<laughs> Did anybody pick up on anything with the color? Other than the one was darker than the other one. It's a, it, it, the, I thought the color was very similar. I, I didn't think there was oh, that no. much difference. No, I mean, it, it, if you look here, you definitely... There's a difference, but it's not oh that much of a difference. I get a, I get a pink hue. Especially I mean, just Dave egg. and his flashlight would find a pretty big difference with yeah, that. But yeah, <laughs> yeah I, it, especially out of A, I get a pink hue. Sorry. You see that? You see that a little bit of <laughs> you pink had in uh, uh, you're uh, asking You're asking the wrong guy uh, for that. Okay. Sorry. So, um, a, a pink hue on the wet hop one on A? More so on yes. A, but it is, yeah. it is also there on B. Um, I can only put that down. I use a little bit of Crystal 5. Um, just to um, I like sta- crystal stand, four a little bit better. Stand the mold up a little bit, but I, I can only put it down to that. Yeah, well, that says a lot that, about you two. That, 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 that's tomorrow. I like even yeah. crystals better, yeah. but that's just me. Anyway, so, so that's all right. Uh, so that's that's, that that's interesting. Uh, I, so well, w- what what we were supposed to achieve with that this did not this failed. I can't. I don't think. I don't think you can. I don't, think, I don't know that it's failed. It's just now you kind of have an idea what it is. Yeah, but it didn't know? make the beer better. Well, it didn't make no. the Kolsch better. Yeah. But 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 had but Nigel. Pale ale. Well, <laughs> exactly. Which but one, which but one but had Nigel better? done it on a one to one ratio like they suggest, could we right, have yeah, the right, right, right. I mean, pretty yeah. different. Yeah, yeah. I agree. B- 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 because, Very good point. Because yeah. yes, the the one that Brandon you and I found different. Had three times as much hops, so yeah, right, and, right, and we would have done that had we had. Yeah, that but it day had less aroma, aroma yeah, exactly. to me, though. Right. It had less aroma. It did me. have less aroma. Yeah. I agree. So, but it had more flavor for sure, a lot yeah. more flavor, <laughs> and, and flavor that lapsed <laughs> into where you were getting into some of the. Well, see, the problem, flavor. the problem I had with that too is that you know I think a lot of times people on, took people conceive this incorrectly, and because. That first one, or the, the 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 one with the wet hops, a lot of times people will, c- because the hops actually cuts the bitter n- or that cuts the sweetness of the wort. So, you know, even even that uh, even if you're dry hopping, you're going to be able to pull out a little bit of that, right? So, so I, I think I think what you're you're tasting the difference between those two warts is 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 you're not getting that crispness from from those hops, and it just kind of takes it makes it taste a little more sweet. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I thought the yeah. sweetness came from the flavor of the hop, though. Myself. Really? Yeah, I did. I really did. I've yeah. never had sweet hops before. Really? <laughs> 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 Except for maybe El Dorado, but you know, that's just me. Especially not, especially not, especially not noble hops. Well, this yeah. is this is not your average noble hop. Well, I mean, that's true too. It's true yeah. Too. But I thought the I thought the the the, the first one was fantastic. Or the the I, the they, one. I think the they're both great with pellets. Yeah, the, the one with pellets was I thought the better beer for sure. I, I have yes. to agree. I mean, with you're, you on you're that, talking yeah. a thirty thirty yeah. almost forty pot beer on that other one, and I think the other one was probably low twenties or mid twenties. I, I think there's that big a difference personally. Which one did you like better? The I, one with I, pellets. I like the pellet B. one better. B. I liked better. Yeah. It is crisper, cleaner. It was yeah. Yeah. But I I think what you draw from that is you is you know now. It, the well, type the of ratio. flavor that that type mm-hmm. of hop, you, you know, contributes. Now, you and, said this was Hollertau Blanc, correct? correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes, that's right. See, we're in a world now where you can use that and blend it with some of these New World hops and that kind of thing in an IPA, and you get that fruity flavor that kind of props up some of the other. Mm-hmm. Big, I mean, shit, your, your Brute earlier had coconut, yeah. fla- a pronounced <laughs> coconut flavor in it. So something like this can blend in nicely with that. That Hollertau Blanc is not just your average noble hop. You're you're not well, just no. using that for a Kolsch and anymore. Now you're doing all kinds of cool things with it. So. And, and yeah. kind of a, on that line, Brock and I in the shop, what we're talking about working up, seeing, maybe doing a couple experiments, doing a hazy IPA uh, as a kit, uh, eventually as a kit, but I'm wanting to use some German hops. Yeah. I'm wanting to use some Kleista, some Ariana, some... Yeah, I know. Shake your head, but you know, hey, <laughs> so it's like tough to do. <laughs> like, like that doesn't mean it's not doable. No, I, I, no, but, I but, think it's a cool but, but idea. We're looking I to use like that idea. just something different. I mean, everybody's using Citra, Mosaic, Simcoe, you know, mm-hmm. like the cool like guy hops. Like the cool guy hops. Yeah, that's right. Oh, fucking hazy yeah, shit. Hey, 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 <laughs> make sells. IPA clear again. So I like my my, both, but I but I think I like them uh, uh, differently. You know, A would pair. Yeah. With with one food or uh, B would pair with with a different one and and B would be more of a, a crisp kind of a re- refreshing yeah. kind of you know beer that you might want to. I think the yeah. first one would pair with anything any kind of food or the the mm-hmm. B 
yeah. uh, would pair with anything in Germany. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think uh, the A would pair great with the drain. I'm just saying. Wow. Oh, wow. Wow. That, wow. Took a strong stance. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I had, okay, so, sorry, man. So, man. <laughs> Mikey, so, what, what are we doing here? I had, I had to just yeah, give so you a hard time. So, what Mikey poured well, here. Let me, let me just finish off saying the wife's family is going to get to drink one of these at Easter on Sunday. <laughs> it's going to be <laughs> a. <laughs> the a. Wife's family are drinking A, aren't I will not disclose. <laughs> <laughs> Last, year, uh, last, year, oh, last wow. year we went through five gallons of uh, fresh hefeweizen in one day. So I don't know. I think I think with the wife's family, you always give them the best one, and it's just whether or not you tell them if it's the best. You're one welcome, or, not. or you're not worthy. They're gonna get a really. <laughs> they're gonna get a really good drinkable beer. Right. Well, they both are drinkable. There you go. You see. Yeah. Right. right up the boom. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. All right. So what are we drinking here, Mikey? So this is a saison, um, and I went a think it's a sizen. It's a sizen, yeah. yeah. It's a sizer, not saison. Uh, I went a different route with the the wet hop, and it's it's something I've done before. Um, so it's not and different. I did I did a mash hop with it. Um, I'm trying to find my recipe, and oh, okay. um, the uh, when you mash hop, um, you're going to get aroma that's going to carry over, and I use the Mandarina Bavaria. Um, so it's Ooh. it's a very distinct orange uh, flavor. Did you use the mandarina in Bavaria in other any other point of the brew day? It's, it's all mandarina. Okay, the whole the, the whole, whole brew every day every bit of this is mandarina. Um, I'm trying to look for my recipe over here because I was um, going to say the the f- the hot flavor and it's pretty pronounced. You do get that yes. that orangey. Yeah. And 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 I use the whole can during the mash, so <laughs> it's like ten Good ounces. Lord, <laughs> but. Oh my um, God. Again, you're not getting bitterness. I mean, you're going to get a, a, a little bit uh, that will trickle over, but you're not you're not really getting bitterness out of that that mash hop. You're getting aroma. You're getting that that flavor that, or the the aroma that's going to carry through. Um, it, it should be noted the end that product. this is a very contentious um, theory. True. There are people who <laughs> really believe in this and people who really don't. Um, Mike. Tasty McDole is a very big believer in mash hopping and suck and it suck it tasty. That's right. Um, <laughs> I mean, he, I, I'm he, a fan he of not it. Not only thinks that it adds something to the flavor, he also feels like it makes the hop flavor last well in a beer. That it that it it maintains it better throughout the life of the beer. I t- so, I would agree on on that. Now, uh, Dr. Charlie Bamforth out of UC Davis would say that he is completely wrong, and there's absolutely no science behind it so this is a completely uh, two completely different ends of the spectrum on, on this particular theory of mash hopping. I'll, I'll be honest the first time he told me he mashed hop i'm like that doesn't make any sense at all to me like doesn't that just volatilize all the aromas and then there's there's nothing left like what is the point well it's, it's it? similar to the theory of first wort hopping I, mm-hmm. I think which is an old german brewing technique but and, mash and hopping makes even less sense <laughs> well, <it> ha- <laughs> Fucking Pete, man. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, you know, we, you know, we say fucking on the on the show now, right? So, so Sandra, the, the first time I ever uh, experienced mash hopping, we were doing um, we we're doing a Berliner Weiss. So Berliner Weiss is, you know, have have right. no hop character. Yeah. Th- that so would be perfect. It makes sense to mash, to hop your mash in a Berliner Weiss, so you have a little bit of bitterness that's going to carry over into. Essentially, a no boil mm-hmm. beer yeah. where you might boil it for 15 minutes to sterilize it, and then you throw a bunch of bugs on it. Um, we took that that same theory and we did a uh, so we did a Gratzer the first time, and we had some uh, some saws dry hop or the, uh, the the whole hop back then, okay. and we we dry hopped or you know mash hopped with saws in the mash. And I, th- I, I mean, I want to say it carries over. Um, there's so a distinct like rumor. I say, there are believers yeah, yeah. about and it. I, I it, think it's mostly subjective it's, on it's, that. So wh- where else uh, on this recipe here? Where else did you use mandarin? Ver- was it only a mash hop or no? no you said well, all the way through. So, well, yeah. So, so well. the only the only wet hop I used was in the mash. Okay. Um, I didn't want the vegetal character, but I wanted the mandarina character. So. I did, um, let's see, I did a 60-minute, and I did uh, a flame-out. One um, ounce each? 
Uh, it's a three quarter ounce at, at sixty and, and fl- um, an ounce at flame out. Um, I mean, also it's Mandarina Bavaria, right? Both yes, Mandarina yeah, right. twenty twenty five point nine calculated IBUs. Um, very moderate for for this style. But I also used the Juvaru yeast oh, from Omega, yes. which has a distinct orange. Um, yeah, no, it, it it was it was good before. But it sat in the chest freezer for it's about really three good, weeks. Yeah. It's. Yeah. I wouldn't say Javaro's really got good. an orange character. I think it's got like a. No, it's got citric a tart. Acid yeah. Type, type of flavor too. It's, yeah. Well, we discussed it as. Yeah. It was pretty harsh. Yeah. See, and Sandra just asked me if I got a little bit of ginger, and and as soon as she said that, maybe and maybe it's that Javaro yeast that. Be, be, I think because once she said that, flavors, I, I am yeah. that, now that I yeah. try it, I do. I get a little bit of I not mean, in a bad way, but. But I a little bit exactly of nice ginger. It's like, really nice. Yeah. That's, that's actually, and, and that has to be the Javaro yeast, mm-hmm. correct? That, and I picked that really one nice. which <laughs> if, if you're listening to this and you have not tried the Javaro yeast. What is wrong some, with you? Order some and find something to throw it on. I think you could use it on a lot of different kinds. You could take your pale ale recipe, put it on there. You could take your IPA recipe, put it on there. You could take your wheat beer recipe, put it mm-hmm. on, Saison, all kinds of stuff. I think the Javaro yeast is really cool. So if you haven't tried it, order some and try it. It's really good. They were like uh, they, smash beers, right? Naked yeah. beer, yeah. See, I missed that. I wasn't here that, for that. That, that. that that was the episode where Stubby like fangirled out yeah. on Javari. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I <laughs> yeah. wasn't here for that one. Now, I took my house Saison and did the Javari on it and just absolutely loved it. I thought it was great. Like, I won't use anything else for a Saison now. I'll uh, still use a couple know. others here and there, but the Javaro is going to be the, the the complexity in this yeast is really yeah, nice. it's really good. It's really nice. Well, I, mean, I think you have to use. I would use it. You have to use it when it's on rye because I think it has such unique characters that I think mm-hmm. you should build recipes around it. Yeah, and that. <laughs> yeah, but first, but first, you got to put it in a couple of your regular recipes to just to see <laughs> to get the characteristics because it's so different than anything else you've yeah. used. And I got to figure out what it is. I was lucky enough that I had a recipe that I could I could throw a a, a hop character behind. Mm-hmm. Um, like Sebby said, you know, you, you do need to build around this particular yeast versus, you know, finding a yeast that fits your fits your recipe. Uh, this was a lucky recipe that I just happened See, to have. See, something else I'll say about this too is this is similar to mine that I did in that I get a lot of peppery phenolics out of this, where. Yes. Y'all did not get that out of James at all. And when I did mine, mine was nice and peppery, and I really like that because normally you've got to use that Belgian Saison yeast to get it, which is a pain in the ass to work with. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah, mine's got wheat. Oh, actually, no, I use spelt I a, in mine, which is I, wheat. I have a half know. pound in mine. Yeah. Yeah. Just a half pound. Yeah. What I do uh, when I... In, I was kind of curious if, if that yeast was actually taking some of the... What was it? Uh, the... the uh, fruit of the cat. Fruit of the cat. Yeah. That could be. That could be, yeah. That's a really good point. That would make a lot of sense, yeah. Do something with a with an acid rest too, and see if you can really pump it up. Ooh. Because I wonder if it doesn't it doesn't convert that acid. That's a really good point. I hadn't thought about that. All right, I, I need to do a hefeweizen for a friend soon, so I can easily do a ten gallon batch, yeah, do there a, you go. a step mash it, and then split it into two batches for. See, uh, when I ferment mine, I alternate two hours of heavy metal, two hours of hip hop, two hours. Of, I did, and I figured that was where I got the peppery <laughs> flavor from. No jazz. No jazz. <laughs> I'm getting way too much credit for that. Yeah. And, and you can come in low with it and, and really get an acid and do the acid rest, and then you get a little bit more that fruitic acid. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we uh, originally were planning to try and do the beer and food pairing 
port portion of this in the first half, but I think we're probably at, what, about an hour and a half now? Yeah, yeah we're real close. close. So let's go we ahead and do take that. a break, and that'll give us a chance to get set up for this. I'm really excited about this. Sandra is our, our resident Cicerone here, and so she knows more about beer and food well, pairing. I got I got to correct you. I'm not allowed to call myself a Cicerone yet, so I'm I'm just a Cicerone a, in training. I'm a certified She's a CIT. Beer ser- <laughs> server, and once I take the test ah, and pass okay, it, okay. then I'm allowed just – Okay, okay. All right, all right. Happy. Important distinction to be made. Yeah, that, that, but at any rate, you know a lot more about beer and food pairing than any of us do, and you've got I some try. really good things lined up for us, <laughs> so we're going to we're gonna prep that during the break. Uh, we'll let the many-colored death melt your face for a few minutes here. We'll come back, and yeah. we'll cover that, and then we'll get so into some of So for you guys that are live, we're going to put a 10-minute counter down and take a 10-minute break, and then we'll, we'll be back live in about 10 minutes. And all we'll right. also have our coupon code of the week. Right. What are you talking about?
Who's spinning? Well, well, uh, where do you don't want to know what we were doing I in the break, but that's fine. <laughs> but it's going to be a really good And break. we're back. All right. Apparently, most of us can't, well, no, not most of us, a couple of us cannot uh, follow a clock, but we are back. They bailed. That's hard. Day. It's their loss. Clock hard. Okay, so we're we're Words gonna get clock it into hard. Some, uh, some food and beer pairings here. This is something we're gonna do probably once a month or so, and we're gonna kind of let uh, Sandra take the lead on this because she because there's terrifying me. They're, they're <laughs> we're terrifying yes. you because I told Mike I'm like I don't do this. That's all right. It's all right. So uh, I'll you preface learn best this from by teaching people. For a long time, I thought this whole food and beer pairing thing was really kind of a overblown concept i i never really thought that there was much to it and yeah and I, right i mean because you know if you're putting food in your belly it takes up room for more beer That's but i always kind of thought like all beer is good with all food and and that kind of thing it, it and it's really just that i'm not good at this at all because when i've had somebody who's good at it do it i thought oh okay i get it now yeah i get it too because you, you go on a bend a bender you know you don't want to eat anything well, and, no, and you know, I, like we, I, it's like we've there's discussed. There's never a time I don't want to eat anything. Brandon, it's like we discussed. I mean, even the wine world, wine is ex- it, it, very similar. You have complementing flavors and you have contrasting flavors. And complementing flavors don't always work. And contrasting flavors don't always work. And sometimes they do. And you just have to figure it out. And, you know, with wine, I, I, I've always thought, like, okay, I kind of get the wine thing. And then it's a lot more simple. You know, lighter flavors with white wine. Uh, but rich, even richer but it, flavors with red wine, it's kind of basic. necessarily you know, too. You know. um, with, with beer, I always kind of thought like you know a really nice pilsner. I could have a pilsner with a steak. I could have it with a taco. I could, you know, really that that kind of oh. thing kind of goes with everything kind of thing. And then I've had a couple of times when people really paired something well, and I thought, okay, I just don't have any idea what I'm talking about. When <laughs> someone else walks me through it, and then and they're better at it than I am, I get it. So. I can't guarantee I'm better than anybody. We're not looking for guarantees. <laughs> We're not looking for guarantees. And We're looking for I, content. So, <laughs> right, and free food because I, I I'm up n- here when y'all are scrambling to get stuff delivered. And I'm like, this is just an elaborate way to get me to cook for the whole. Well, party, yeah, you know, it? for that, for that, when we when we I'm do on board the, for that. the the you know gas station grill, you know, you have to go to the gas station grill and bring us food. You know, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> See, the odd thing too is I I really. I, I'm much more into cooking than I'm in, I am brewing. I cook six nights a week you well, know, in, in my in house. In a sense so that brewing beer is nothing more than cooking. Yeah, it, yeah. It's the same concept. Yeah, it is. I think I have a better handle on deconstructing brewing than I do with cooking. I mean, I just I, I know what I know how to do with cooking, but I don't necessarily know why. You know, <laughs> with, yeah. with, with brewing, it's the opposite uh, of that. I really know the why of everything, and it, it, it's the execution where I get lost, <laughs> you know. And see the jokes on y'all, because Mike is our cook at the house. Yeah. It, oh, yeah. It's common knowledge. If I can screw up a recipe, I will. <laughs> well, hey, I'm just saying we better get some of this food pairing going on, or I'm going to eat all the yeah, food. Yeah, okay, so let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's get started here, because okay, we do have so one beer poured. I have to give credit to this um this actual food pairing that we're going to do tonight is from um a book it's called beer pairing it's the essential guide from pairing pros it's by julia hertz and gwen conley we did this the first night of my cicerone boot camp and it really opened my eyes to not only what beer could do to food but what food could do to beer because i always was under the impression that the beer was what was bringing out more in the food i never realized that the food was actually could bring out something in very the good too. point yeah so um the first thing well how this works is they call them palate trips and there's six or seven of them in the book some of them are really good some of them have train wrecks in them i've had the train wrecks during my cicerone class don't combine a goza with a tabasco sauce yeah she came home one people she came home one night and she <laughs> was like not pretty yeah she was like i had the worst pairing tabasco sauce and a sour and i was like yeah that just has to be bad that just no, i want to do that n- yeah. n- nothing about it that sounded good this, the heat in the tabasco I'm sauce okay with to that. a level that it's like you're crying and don't w- want to eat anymore i want this <laughs> well there you go so um what you're going to do is you're going to take um your food we have uh vine stefana hef um we're going to the first thing we're going to have it with is the raspberry. And then the second thing we're going to have it with is the key lime pie. And you're going to kind of 
figure out what it does to the raspberry jam and what it does to the key lime pie and mm. then what those foods actually do to the beer. All right, cool. So do you do the jam and then the beer? or? So what I like to do, I wish I wanted to have water, but what I like to do is try each of the foods separately and then try the beer and then try them together. So put some food in your mouth, put some beer in your mouth and see what they do together. Okay, so try the food individually. Mm-hmm. I do have water here. so He's prepared. <laughs> yeah, Accidentally. Where's the beer? You didn't um, get any. I <laughs> did put some on the desk. <laughs> mm. yeah, so, so the first two foods we have is raspberry jam and key lime pie. I love raspberry Already jam. Already a big fan. Yeah, I mean, yeah. how can you go wrong with both of these? Shit, that key lime pie is good. <laughs> okay, Ooh. so we've had them each individually. Ooh, that is really good key lime pie. <laughs> that's really good key lime pie. <laughs> I don't know where you got that, but that's outstanding. That's Edward's. Really? Just Edward's in case they're listening like and want to send us pie. Like, right, they, I'll they, give they should you my definitely address. send us pie. Yeah. So now do some of the... Now drink some beer? The jam and then the... Or do dr- beer and then jam, or, or what? Both of them together. Or both of them, just as long as they're in your mouth together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Put them in your mouth together. Is this your Javaru? Talk about what you... That this is Vine, with Vine, Vine, no. Vine has to fun. Vine has to Okay. I Ooh. get that now. Okay. It's great radio. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, 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 and I, I would say this. Raspberries go great in Hefeweizen. I'm just saying. Wow. Really, really good. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay. So, somebody smarter than me, talk about this. So, raspberry, it, it enhanced the tartness of the the wheat beer, but I lost the body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it actually brings yeah. out a little bit of a citrus flavor in the in the beer. Like, like like it almost washed the the, the beer away, like like it w- wasn't having anything. So now I got to try the key lime. You see, in our class, we thought that um, the hefeweizen actually made the raspberry almost sweeter. That you lost mm-hmm. the banana character of the hefeweizen. I think that's it. I'm losing the breadiness and the banana in the in the yeah, wheat beer. Yeah, I would agree with that. I will say this too: I would never in a million years think of sitting here and eating jam with a f- with a spoon. And but drink with a half. but <laughs> with this, I would actually, I would actually do this at home. But now the key lime pie, you get back the banana, the, the, and you lose, lose kind the, of the the clove. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the I, way the way the tartness plays off yeah. that. Yeah, I think that the hefeweizen really now, accentuates the the vanilla oh. and graham cracker flavor in in the pie. <laughs> Stubby's like too Dude, late. Like the, I think the crust really. <laughs> Pops when you've got yeah. the, the the beer involved too. Yeah. Well, and like, and, and and so uh, in the, in the, this can go. Think about this too, because when you're doing these food pairings, if if you think something does taste good, we well, can utilize that in your beer as well. Because that's true. Yeah. That's a good so. Point. For example, uh, wh- one of the things I like to do for parties and stuff is actually take five pounds of uh, either uh, puree or uh, five pounds of. Uh, like fre- frozen raspberries and mash it up and stick it in a uh, a nylon bag and stick it in the keg of a he- in, in hefeweizen. In man. a hef, yes. And I'm telling you, dude, it, it, it tastes a lot like uh, it tastes a lot like a fr- uh, Lindemann's Framois. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's pretty dang close. <laughs> um, uh, you know, even though I know that's a, a lambic or whatever, it it's well, pretty it's pretty a pretty mild. A lot closer <laughs> more, to a hefeweizen. There's more if you need it. It's more uh, more okay. of a uh, more. Yeah. More of a uh, uh, raspberry tart. Damn, I, I gotta say that was really fantastic. <laughs> so normally, I I mean I, and like Stubby said, raspberry goes in wheat beer really well, but uh, the key lime pie is much better mm-hmm. <laughs> with with as a well, food. Um, yeah. Now, granted, we're just we're just eating the raspberry jam. Did you do both? At the same time, yeah. Ooh, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> see, see, <laughs> variables you didn't think about were drunk. That's true. <laughs> Brandon's creating his own pairings over there. That's right. <laughs> um, and 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 this is, it's an interesting thing. But you know, we're we're just eating raspberry jam, so. It, that's the thing about this. It's inconceivable yeah. to me to sit here and just eat spoonfuls of jam, 
And I'm like, shit, I would do that. Actually, the, just a, a little spoonful of this jam with Hefeweizen would be a really nice dessert. It's not unsimilar to what they do in Germany with the Berliner Weizen. Yeah, syrup. you're right. Right. Yeah, you're right with the syrups in it. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. It's a. Uh, it's actually a little bit better to be able to meter <laughs> how much you get, you know. And, and in a sense, that's the essence of pairing food with beer. You want to match the intensity, so you don't want to pair like a big barrel-aged stout with a salad or something delicate or anything like that. But you want, so you want to keep that in oh, mind. Oh yeah. But really, it's it's drinking a beer and eating a food, <laughs> and what are the flavors that pop out to you? Do that? Do they sound like they'll go together? Well, then try them together and see what it does. And not everything is going to be a success. Hopefully it's not as big of a failure as Tabasco sauce and it goes up. But <laughs> well, you know, we talked about that a lot, too, when you're talking about um, like uh, porters and stouts and adding coconut and vanilla and mm -hmm. that kind of thing where, you know, adding vanilla actually makes chocolate stand out right. a lot more and that kind of thing. And so that it's even within recipe recipe building in beer, it, it it's a similar thing. This is just a continuation of that, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never really thought of the idea of the food making the beer taste different. different. Right. And that's you're you're 100 percent right about that. And that had never even occurred to me. So that's a really well. Good point. And, and I mean, I think this is a big, big thing that people should think about, too. And I think this is really important because even when you're tasting your beer, it does have an effect on on the way the beer tastes to you, what you ate that day. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I, I think, I think a lot of the times it, you, you guys have all probably ha experienced this. You came in and you, you drank that beer and you go, Oh man, this is fantastic. And then the next day you, you taste it and you go, ah, it doesn't really taste as good as it did and yesterday. It doesn't even have to be something that you tasted. Like when you, when you're sitting down to do um, a BJCP event, they don't want somebody walking through with anchovy pizza because that's right. going to throw your, throw how everything smells yeah and, and, that's, and that's we in and i wanted to bring them but we forgot but uh in my first class they did something with um gummy bears and they just gave us two red gummy bears in a pouch and they told us to eat it with and plug our nose so we ate it and you're wondering okay is this a cherry is this i mean it's all sweet then so you stuck the, the gummy bears no. in each nostril? <laughs> in each nose, yes. No, and then know. drank a beer. <laughs> that would be a talent. But no, you ate it with your nose plugged. And then you let you let go. And all of a sudden you realized you were eating a cinnamon gummy bear. Oh, really? Because you, you got, yeah. She, really? came, she came home oh. from class and she's like, you got to try this, you got to try this. Well, she's like, and he's like, yeah. what? Uh, yeah, 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 she's like, eat this gummy bear and plug your nose. And I'm like, okay. So I take a couple bites and she's like, you know, unplug your nose, and then just you get this like it rush of cinnamon. cinnamon. Like, wow! It was the most. It was oh, a that's mind trip. Cool. So it was have really cool. You have like, to think. Taste is seventy percent smell. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. So I remember back in. Well, I, I think all statistics are ninety eight percent made up on the spot. So third back in third grade, we did this, and I I vivid re vividly remember this. They plugged my nose and. I was blindfolded with gummy and, bears and they're handing me like they gave me a coffee bean. They gave me, I remember a cool ranch Dorito and you can't taste. I mean, like these, Dude, these incredibly, they had cool you're older than, <laughs> I was going to say you're older than that. Uh, no, we had, no, it was back then. Yeah. We still had a cool ranch then, but <laughs> oh, yeah, it may have been cool ranch degree. It may have just been called ranch Dorito back then. No, it was, no, cool, it was ranch. cool ranch. We had it, man. <laughs> we had it. <laughs> but, but these, they, they didn't taste like, what mm -hmm. what they do taste like when you can smell them. And it's one of yeah. the, I really encourage people to, I mean, it sounds crazy, but go do that experiment. I'm going to do that. That's that's a really cool. You always hear that oh, most of the flavor or, or most of the, the flavors in the smell. And you're like, really? Like, I mean, I know when I'm stuffed up, I can't taste anything. But right. really, it really. Well, is. that was kind of what is disappointing about the cold spear, because you would think with all those wet hops, you'd have more aroma. It should taste better, right? Mm -hmm. right. But <laughs> well, I, I don't think more aroma necessarily equals taste better with Kolsch. I mean, I, I think that <laughs> it had a different it had a different hop character to it. It was a hop character that didn't suit a Kolsch. Right. The thing. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll so have to do more experiments. The, the yeah, second yeah. beer that we have is um, Friday IPA by Martin House, and we're pairing it first with key lime pie, and then um, <gasps> since we later have Canadian beers, we have... Yeah, we do. We have Canadian cheddar that has been aged for... A thousand days because apparently they don't count years there, so thousand days. 
Exactly. Uh, 1,000 days. Day 1,001, they chuck it. That's right. It, it, I mean, it's just thrown the fuck out. All right, so let's let's give this a shot here. Wow. So to me, it All makes right. it really funky. <laughs> no, I mean, like, really like, funky. like funky, like funky cheese or something. It's already a pretty funky cheese for a cheddar. No, I'm talking about the key lime. It makes it kind of funky to me. The cheese or the beer? <laughs> I'm lost. No, no, no. I, yeah, I ate the key too. lime pie with it, and it, it made the, the beer taste really funky, like like almost like Brett, almost. Oh, weird. I, w- I went yeah. cheese first. God damn it, Brandon. Sorry. Yeah, you screwed it all up, Brandon. The notes say. No, actually, I think IPA the cheese. key lime pie first. Actually, oh, there's notes? Actually, I sure. actually think the, the cheese actually knocks the hop character down. It's less bitter to me. I think the key lime brings out the bitterness. Mm-hmm. And I it, think it accentuates the citrus flavors in, correct, the, yeah. in the hops, And too. it makes mm. the IPA feel almost drier than it really is. Yeah. That's good cheese. <laughs> the The cheese is really good, but it it's hard for the flavors to really meld with the IPA, I think. Mm-hmm. They're very contrasting, which is surprising to me. I would have thought that they would have blended together better. Mm, it really cuts the, the bitterness, yeah. Yeah, it's weird because I think, I think that... The IPA or the the key lime actually accentuates the bitterness a little yeah. bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it accentuates a lot in the beer. And the the cheese makes the IPA very sweet, almost to overtly me, to, sweet. Is Tyler to, sitting back there not getting anything? Tyler, man, come Tyler, get some come get it. some food and some beer. Yeah, so, so, there's half a key lime pie over here. Here's a whole plate. <laughs> there's a whole plate right there. Whole plate right here. Oh, I've got the food. I don't have the beer. Oh, well, oh here's okay. The beer well, too. here's beer. Oh. Boom. So what what? So it's kind of funny. It's like it's to me that is, is that really what was that what you're supposed to expect there? Is you're supposed to have less bitterness with the the cheese, or it kind of knocks it or mutes it maybe a little bit? <laughs> you see, personally, I felt like the cheese didn't really meld with the beer at all. It made just, it sweet to me. It just seemed to me like I had cheese and beer <laughs> in my mouth. They, they were the key lime pie. They. They kind of played together a little bit better, and the, the flavors were more complementary of each other. And I think with the IPA and the cheese, it brought out more of the sharpness from the cheddar than, than we got from the, the key lime pie. You said the, the, the beer brought out I the sharpness of the cheddar? I think key lime pie goes with beer. More, the cheddar <laughs> looked yeah. a little more sharp. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. <laughs> and see, by, you know, I, I see what you're saying, but to me, the, the biggest takeaway was that the IPA was overtly sweet mm-hmm. because of and and I think I focused on the beer versus the cheese, and I can see the opposite side of that yeah. would be the cheese being more sharp. And I think it's probably the sharpness from the cheddar and the bitterness from the beer kind of cancel each other right. out, and so you get that um, the the sweetness from the beer. That makes sense. Absolutely. So so I think these are really great experiments in the fact that that <coughs> this, this helps you train your palate. Yes. And. and I, I think that's the biggest problem with with people when they're, especially home brewers. Uh, I would say that a lot of times what they uh, they think may be a good combination is not necessarily a great combination. But this may be a great way uh, to experiment with with beers that you're trying to experiment with. So, yeah. oh, you want to make an IPA with uh, peppers? <laughs> oh, just well, maybe like just drink them together. To see if the Dante. if the, if those flavors even meld together, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's Definitely, a very good yeah. point. And so, uh, and you know, one of the things like I that, now know I don't want any of my beer to be cheesy. <laughs> so one of the things that I think is amazing to me is is two flavors that you would you would never I, I never really thought about, but like, uh, I, I, and I knew that these flavors went together long before RAR started their Paleta de Mango, but uh, like peppers and mangoes go awesome together. And and like uh, uh, habaneros and, and mangoes go great together, and, and so it, it's just really funny how 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 some of these flavors really go well together, and, and they so w- when you have those kind of flavors, I think that's something you got to consider when you're making your your beers too, because you you got to have something that melds well together. See, now I would have really thought that the IP and the cheese was going to be the highlight of that last one, and for me. I didn't get, I don't think either one of them accentuated the other mm-hmm. or added anything to the other. They were just, they seemed like they were on their own. And then the, the IPA and the key lime pie were fantastic. I thought that was really good. Absolutely yeah, fantastic. yeah, that was really good. 
And but, so the fun part about this is there's no right or wrong answer. Yeah, exactly. Every yeah. single person has a different palate. Every single person has learned because we've learned that you there's like 560 different aromas or flavors to to, mm -hmm. to beer and you don't as a human necessarily know how to equate what i taste to a word right and right. so this real especially when you do it in the group this is really an opportunity to, to put those words to right. what you what you're tasting and and that's well, a really excellent point and that is the value i th in my opinion to the bjcp training and 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 then judging mm -hmm. is to to exercise that muscle you know, and, right. and be able to pick out individual flavors in beer. And table muscle? The yes. table muscle, yeah. <laughs> I got a lot of that, man. I got a lot of it. I don't know. That and actually, uh, to that extent, um, when I started studying for my Cicerone in particular, that's something that I struggle with a lot. I always, like, I know it's there, but I can't put a word to it. Right. And there are... Um, that's part of, that's part of the, the, that's the biggest part, though. Yeah. You're learning your your palate mm -hmm. you, you you and i think the biggest problem i think with and that's why i always tell people to do sensory training do bjcp training mm -hmm. do cicerone training because all of that if you're sitting with somebody that can describe that flavor for yes. you you're going oh 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 that's i've tasted that flavor a million times yeah. but you never knew and how to, to there's describe actually it two resources if you don't want to go sit and judge or, or things like that there are two resources that i i've used um craft beer has a tasting sheet and it breaks down um when you when you taste something does it taste caramel does it taste i mean it gives you the words so that as you're drinking a beer you can you circle them and you get used to okay when i'm uh when i'm tasting beer this is what i should look for these are the flavors i should work look for i also use the deductive beer tasting method which is another book all these are on the cicerone website you can go on there and get these re free resources, whether you're training to be a Cicerone or not. They're there under the, the resources. There's and also a fa fantastic a, one. Like the, the uh, flavor wheel. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think there's a BJCP flavor wheel. And it'll, it, you know, you start in the outer ring and you come up with, because I, I, I understand completely what you're saying. You, you may not know how to put that into words, mm -hmm. but right. you, you, you do know where to start. I mean, you, right. you know what you're tasting. Mm -hmm. And you may not know exactly what to say. You just need that but, word. Right. To, and so that play. flavor wheel. That's exactly right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It starts on the outside with the the big character. Okay, mm -hmm. I taste citrus. Okay, then you move in on the flavor wheel on citrus and it breaks down all the citrus flavors you might taste. And then you can start going, oh, well, oh, no, wait, it, it's, it's orange. It's mm -hmm. not grapefruit. So things like that um, yeah. in a, a, a That's third resource. I, I really love the deductive beer tasting. It's a mm -hmm. book, and then it has a sheet that you can print out, and it has, all right, you taste caramel. So is it this kind? Is it this kind? Is it this kind? Mm -hmm. And then you just and right. you just go through the tasting yeah. sheet and fill it out, and it's got aroma, it's got mouthfeel, mm. it's got flavor, it's got That's all those great. things broken down, <laughs> and and you can, if you're a nerd like me, you can keep <laughs> them in a book so that you can go reference it back. But it's really. It's a great way to learn those words. And, and I've long contended that, you know, even though I'm not a big competition guy, I, I don't enter beer in competition very often or anything like that. But I love the judging side of it. And the reason I love the judging side of it is I think it makes me a better brewer. I think it makes me a better brewer, right. and I think it makes me enjoy beer more. And it's exactly for that reason in that I'm able to quantify exactly what it is I'm tasting mm -hmm. and identify particular things and and if you don't do it on a regular basis and you don't sit down and and write it down for for me anyway it, write it down or at least speak it and identify what it is what you end up with is what you hear a lot when you go on the internet and you read in forums and that kind of thing about people all my beers taste the same they all taste like this or i have this problem with my beer and I, I don't know exactly tastes like extract right and and people can't explain what it is Right. They're not happy with about their beer. Mm -hmm. If you can't specifically identify what it is you're not happy with about your beer, there's no way for you to fix it. Right. And there's no way for you to ask anybody else how to help you fix it or anything like that. You yes. have to be able to know how to identify all those individual flavors and communicate them to other people and, and then link them to what causes them and all right. that. So and, 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 and there's a couple of points I'd like to make on that is that the first thing is, is that 
I think it's an invaluable experience if you have somebody like James Alon that you're able to t- sit there and and uh, listen to <laughs> and uh, uh, actually drink beer. If you're able to drink beer with, with a very seasoned judge, yep. I don't think there's a more valuable experience because that's one of the things that's really helped me. And, and I mean, uh, for example, when we did a lot of the Siebel tests and stuff like that, when I first, the first time I ever did the Siebel, you know, um, and the Siebel test, if you get the big ones, it's not just flaws. It's actually stuff like Gerenial, what you're going to get from really hoppy beers and it's different, different flavors other than just pure flaws, right? And so a lot of times what that does for you is that you, it starts to put two and two together. You know what I mean? Right. You start to go, oh, okay. I, I've tasted that flavor many times in, in a beer before, but I, I didn't know exactly what it was. Right, never I, knew what it was, right. Yeah. Yeah, and you start to learn all these nuances or, you know, it, it, and it even goes further than that. Once you start to develop your palate, you can taste all these these nuances in wine or whiskeys or, you know, I mean, a lot of people talk, you, you hear people, I thought people were crazy when they used to talk about, oh, you can taste cinnamon and you can taste this and whiskey. And I'm like, oh, man, well, y'all are crazy, blah, 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 or vanilla. I couldn't tell the damn difference. But, but now that my... T- palate has developed in beer i can taste all those nuances even in whiskey now so mm-hmm. uh, but th- those are the things that you start to look for and and and, and if you have anybody that allow you to do sensory analysis training man that's that's going to go so far in 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 making you be able to brew better beer because right. uh, most of the time it, when you first started brewing or whatever when you tasted a beer you would be going man i really like this beer but you couldn't exactly tell you to you couldn't explain why you like that beer, right? And now, now you can kind of go, man, this is a perfectly balanced beer. It's perfect bitterness to, to malt flavor. It's a, or if it's got any kind of other spices or anything, it's perfectly balanced with this hop character, and it's probably a noble hop or it's a American hop. It's it's all about the balance, you know. And it gives you a better better sense of how you can manipulate a certain thing yes. to yeah. bring yeah, out exactly. a little bit more like yeah. instead of just being like it just needs a little bit more you know exactly what why it why why it doesn't taste good or doesn't even more it. importantly if you and a friend disagree about whether or not something is good <laughs> well they're wrong then you're able to say well your opinion is not valid and mine is much more and then you just tell them that you're like you're factually wrong and well, then you just punch them in the face. When you get really good, or the at, when you get really good at this, it, <laughs> you got to start keeping your opinion to yourself because I ruined. No, so you're many, right. You're I right ruined about that. So yeah. many beers for Mike because I'm like, he's he's like, you've got that look. There's something <laughs> off. And he's like, what is it? And I'm like, I can't tell you till you take a sip because you're gonna be mad because I ruined an okay. Yep. You th- what oh, you thought was an okay beer, and I'm gonna tell you that's a butter bomb. Leave it alone. <laughs> how, how many beers did I run for you, Brandon? Uh, a couple, yeah, yeah. Stubby sure. ruins beers for me every time we're here. I still have a Dragon's Milk banana coconut Laffy Taffy sitting yeah, in my yeah, fridge <laughs> that I cannot now drink because every time I look I'm, at it, I go. I don't think you could put that. I don't think you could put that on Stubby. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I can. No, I love no. that beer. Tell, tell Stubby's like it's banana Laffy Taffy, and I'm like, shit. It really is banana Laffy Taffy. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I still have a hard again. time blaming him for that one. I really do. <laughs> so, so what do we have our next thing here? We got the, some ten fifty in our glass, and I yes. want to drink it, but I don't want to drink it without. So this eating is what my I'm favorite eat. combination, and not just I because hope we're not I doing love key lime pie. I already ate my cheese. We're done with the raspberry jelly we're done with the key lime uh, pie no actually raspberry cherry don't we come back to the raspberry no we don't mm. oh okay good because i ate that Thanks, last dear. bite <laughs> appreciate that cool i'm gonna put the raspberry see, jelly see on my I key lime you were already pie. married i thought the Oktoberfest we came back around no that's why it only says dark chocolate. okay <laughs> see yeah. what i deal with at home was it a problem i ate all my cheese already um, you can steal some more off this oh plate. Yeah, I'll steal that. Next I time. eat all yeah. my cheese. So <laughs> this is my favorite combination is the um, ten fitty with um, the aged cheddar. All right. And then we also have dark chocolate covered pecans or er, um, almonds. Sorry, we couldn't find pecans. Good. Pecans and are evil. See now this one, I do feel like I'm able to meld the flavors of the cheese and the beer, unlike I was with. The last one. Oh, that was the other point I was going to be- make. Don't ever put cheese in beer. It's terrible. Yeah, don't do that. No, no. You don't want cheese beer. Oh, 
Oh, but damn. I can imagine like the dairy in that probably curdles and is awful. But <laughs> well, see, I've had it at NHC a few times. It's pretty really? disgusting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, and I love ten fifty. So to me, anything paired with ten fifty is going to be gold. But damn, Cat with that, what, 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 well, <laughs> <laughs> I will with, pay to see that. With, with, with this aged cheddar. Man, this ten fitties. Oh, man. that's really good. So my, it's I so liked good. it, <laughs> and the conclusion from my class was that you get almost a smoky character to the ten fitty after you have the cheese, which well, you don't really get on its own. Yeah. And, and here's I one of the things get that from ten fitty. Here's one of the things that I would say though, because man, that's that's a hard that's a hard like small box to put in che- uh, cheese. You know yeah, what I mean? Because right, yeah. I mean, you can, you can have a hundred different cheese with the same beer, mm-hmm. and there may be some beer that, you know, some cheese that you're going, oh my god, this amazing one, and then the next one is like terrible. I mean, oh, there's absolutely. so many so different. You, here's cheeses. where I think I have an advantage for having eaten all my cheese and then <laughs> had to steal Pete's cheese because I ate all mine before this, is I got familiar with this cheese, and this cheese kind of has like a, a, a farmhouse, kinda, almost like mm-hmm. a goat cheese flavor to it. Yeah, and salty. I think the I think the the ten fifty. Uh, takes away a bunch of that that uh, kind of petting zoo flavor <laughs> from it. <laughs> I, I don't mean that in a bad way. I like cheese <laughs> like that. Yeah. At least it doesn't uh, have ball sack flavor. I've had cheese like that. Yeah. I've Although I've that. had lots of ball sacks, you know. <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know why he's bragging about that. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, I stepped right into that one. All right, that's a whole different pairing. <laughs> Jesus. He ran right through the door. Mm-hmm. He opened I think, it I and think then that, ran. Right yeah, that's Bud Ice that pairs with that, but <laughs> at any rate, but I think it mellows the cheese Natty, out a lot Natty. and takes off some of that uh, some of that farmhouse flavor, yeah. and, and you get a little bit more of the 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 base cheese flavor to it. Where D- does it accentuate the salt to you for me? A little mm-hmm. bit, yeah, yeah, I agree on that. Yeah, yeah. which because I, I didn't really it, notice it no. being salty. I mean, I know they they cover a lot of cheese with salt, but. It, to me, I can taste the salt more mm-hmm. when I drink that. Well, I think it's just because it takes away that kind of funky, yeah, goat cheese. And that type was of flavor that was it. the conclusion in the class. Exactly, was that the cheese had a little bit of a funk to it, and when you had this added the stout, there's no funk to that cheese. It, that's it, delicious. You don't think there's <laughs> any funk to that? That's, that's, I don't mean it in a bad way. So I'm from Wisconsin, so I gotta say the Canadians did pretty okay on this one. <laughs> That's good cheese. Mm-hmm. It is good cheese, like but it's I got a little bit of, of funkiness to it, I think. It's like $9 at H-E-B. This is good listening right yeah, here. Yeah, all so this smacking <laughs> in the <laughs> microphone. So, so now, th- uh, I've already moved ahead of you guys, and I've already tried the 1050 with the dark chocolate-covered almonds. Is that what these yeah, are? Yeah, these I are dark chocolate I thought they were grapes. I'm a dipshit. <laughs> Chocolate covered grapes? <laughs> no, no, you just ju- thought they were grapes, no, just period. Grapes. Oh. <laughs> I thought they were Whoppers. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so much smacking on the mics, dude. <laughs> well. <laughs> Don't eat all of your pecans. There's one more beer. Oh, shit. <laughs> we pecans? Have we had pecans? Oh, no. Almonds. Sorry, no. <laughs> they were supposed to be I was like, pecans. Shit. So I keep looking down and seeing pecans in the notes and going, what? I am so glad they're not pecans. So I thought the beer really brought out the nuttiness out of there. That yes. was kind of covered up by the chocolate if you ate it by itself. And, no. and, and see, I think the beer covered up kind of some of the dark chocolate, like, bitterness. It, 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 yes. It, it smoothed it out. It smoothed maybe a everything bit. out. You're I, right. I, 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 I feel like I lost now, the nut. I apologize because this is in a green bottle, so there is a 50 50 chance here it could be skunked. Goddamn Germans. But you have no control over that. It, it, it's hard to I get a good Oktoberfest in is. April. Right. <laughs> Total wine. Come, Come in. in. <laughs> and we have people knocking <laughs> during a radio show. Well, that, that was kind of random there. Mm. I swear to God. Yeah, this one is Can't skunked. Can't work in these conditions. <laughs> it smells we, skunked. We have three, two more if you want to try. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it is I'm, so skunked. It is so skunked. <laughs> it is bad. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Don't drink this one. Let's see if any of these other ones are good. Oops. If not, this... I have something that will make up for Holy it. Holy God damn. <laughs> Did you miss me? That's amazing how skunky an wow. Oktoberfest is. With almost no hops. Green bottles. 
That's wow. straight up like skunk run over on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Okay, this one is not so bad. So so chug that big glass. Golly. You have a shitty. Uh, <laughs> I, see, I actually don't mind skunk beer. <laughs> you need some lime? No. Wow. Man, I it like reminds skunk. me of the cousin. <laughs> I don't want to know what you do with your cousin. <laughs> well, yeah, that's <laughs> no the cousin. Like what? That goes back to the Arkansas. Like no, the hops cousin. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> tomorrow, I work, I work is, in healthcare. Uh, I can't do that. Tomorrow is significant, I believe. Yes, there we go. For, for, for the cousin, How is it oh, the Brit the is cousin. the only one that knows what I'm talking about. Because I'm hip, cool, trendy, and with it. <laughs> I work in healthcare. I can't do that. That's because it's 2019. That doesn't mean you don't know what it is. It's 2019, and we're just honest with it. <laughs> All know, right, so we don't talk in code anymore. <laughs> so this last one kind of failed because the beer skunked green bottles, but... This one is much, much better. You're right. That, that one better. bottle was really bad. This one's not so bad. We, we have this a lot in class. We're like, well, this one's not as skunked as bad. We might be able to taste the beer. <laughs> But oh yeah, much better. That was amazing. I mean, it's, it's, it's not it's not great, but no. for such a malty beer with yeah. so little yeah. hops in it, it's amazing that that much skunk came out of it. Mm. <laughs> you there said you that go. without moving All your right. lips. Take so, one and pass one down. So, so the next thing she's working is something I've been told about. She came home from class and told me about this, and it it has me kind of excited. I can't wait to try it. Thank you. Right. Because Cicero I came back at the right time. Right? You came back at the exact right time. No, so man. You missed out on the cheese. You missed out on a lot of shit. He missed out on okay, the skunk so, yeah. uh, so, so did we talk about how the Oktoberfest pairs with the uh, pecans, or did we just kind of... Are we doing we that? You mean the almonds? Yeah. Or is that, is that, yeah, yeah, the almonds. Because, because the beer sucked. Okay, cool. Yeah. Fair enough. So, um, But we're still drinking the beer. Well, right? Isn't that what we're doing right now? Nope. No, we're not. So we're doing a different beer? Yeah, yeah. So because you guys held out and you know put up with no but this was the second bottle was if good if you really want to keep drinking it all right go for it so i'm not going to not drink it all right <laughs> i think what she's saying so is brandon shut up yeah <laughs> I'm trying to get us through to the good part we got lots of, we got lots of canadian beer left too this guy oh i'll take this canadian. So disappears for 25 <laughs> minutes comes back in tells me to shut up no 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 i was <laughs> interpreting what sandra was telling you I don't think she's said that. I think she's a much nicer person than you are. I am I much nicer. I, 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 I might have broken it down into the basics. <laughs> All right. So, so I'm, I'm what are we trying here? Out, I'm passing out 1050. And uh, in my class, uh, Robert Scroggs, is, he's a certified Cicero, and he teaches my boot camp. Very and he kept knowledgeable guy. Yeah. Right, Very I have some thing guy. Now I've got two cans. If you can take his class, it's next level. I, I like Robert but, a lot. He's um, a good guy. He told us the best way to drink 1050 is through a Twix straw. And Whoa. We thought I thought what a better way to show <laughs> that beer pairing doesn't have to be that serious than drinking ten fifty through a Twix straw. All so right. you're gonna bite the end off of e each end off your Twix and drink your ten fifty. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> because the cookie is porous and it can become a straw. Get the Shut fuck the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out. That's genius. All right. Now, Twix is already perfect to begin with. That's true. It doesn't do much to emphasize anything on the beer, but you now have a but 10 But it's fucking fitty, cool. <laughs> you now have a 10 fitty flavored Twix. And is there anything what, better than that? If you don't do this at the next get together at your house you're crazy <laughs> oh no 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 the beer is much better the beer is much better oh through the twix straw <laughs> is tyler getting it? are we just leaving i will go give tyler some mike has got some uh twix i believe i got some. holy okay <laughs> 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 fucking shit <laughs> Okay, I, this, I told you she, she came home raving about this, and she's what like, other I, "I drank a ten fifty through a Twix straw." I'm like, "What? Are, what are you talking about? What other oh, candy yeah. can we use as a straw?" Oh, this is like, yeah, this beer. Said, next level. He <laughs> said he got this from another cicerone, so only highly educated beer people do this. Yeah, but what are the beers? Could it be? It didn't have to. Be I know, beer. right? I mean, it could be Lone Star and anything. What? What, what other incredible. candy could it be, though? 
I walk out. But that, that, that's a whole nother option. What? Why not? Why not just a Twix straw? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, do Twix? Like, to be do fair, Twix I've got shit all what, over what about, my shirt what about, now. Like, what about like Twizzlers? Well, then after you do this, too literal, man. You Two have on the to nose. eat the Twix. So. Oh, I'm I'm worried about the beer right now. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's wow, that, game changing right that, there. Is yeah. anybody monitoring the uh the Facebook feed? Yeah, no, 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 no nobody's going ape shit over our there's only four people watching it. Oh I'm Jesus. Okay. Right. Right. We're all we're the only ones watching. We had like thirty anymore. people in the first half and they're all missing out because this is <laughs> one of the coolest things I've ever <laughs> This is pretty damn so cool. If I get nothing out of my training, I learned to drink it. A stout through a Twix straw. That's, that's fucking amazing. <laughs> and that's worth fucking it. Fucking amazing. <laughs> what are you thinking there, Tyler? I, s- I, I see you going to town. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, an, it's and another the one of these. afterwards. Uh-huh. Like eating that's the, the thing. Twix. That's, that's the thing. Is There's like several levels to it. It's like the beer that you're getting through it is one thing. And then, you know, the Twix, oh, eating the Twix, and then drinking the beer afterwards after a Twix has been in it, and it, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> I'm I almost feel, at a loss for words. I mean, it's so like, I feel <laughs> I need to now try a peanut butter Twix to see what that does. Oh, no, no, no. That's oh. going to fly too close twig. to the sun on wings of <laughs> yeah, that's, pastrami. That's, that's, that's ruined the Twix, that is. Ooh, now I'm going to eat more of this key lime pie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know oh. why I even ate before I came here tonight. Or say, God I, damn. After that, I almost need a cigarette. Like, <laughs> whew, that was good. That'll ruin your palate. You don't want that. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That was, uh, th- that's, it's pretty rare these days that we find a mind-blowing thing that's been done. I mean, I've been out at Martin House <laughs> or, or Collective or something like that where they're drinking pickle juice and Jameson's and... I mean, there's all kinds of shit that people are doing these days, combining things together. That, that's <laughs> a game changer right there. That was a really good. So, so Aaron, Aaron Rodgers has another game changer. He said he's going to drink his prickly pear saison through a Twizzler. There you go. Now, what 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 flavor Twizzler are we talking here, Aaron? Are we talking like like, like Twizzlers regular flavor? Are only one flavor. No, twi- they have no. Other. They got black. They got black and they got red. Blue. <laughs> Blue. I'm not sure there's a flavor called red <laughs> or black. Yeah, black is not a flavor. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they have flavors. That's verging on racism. Well, what there. flavor is that? It's blue. Like like someone's drinking a beer and filling out a BGCP score sheet. Like it has a lot of blue. Speaking of which, you see that has a lot of blue beer. with a little bit well, of black. Uh, so talking there. about the turning point beer. You know what? I'm sorry, but <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ! What the hell are you guys doing? Tyler and I went over there yesterday. <laughs> we, 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 we closed up the shop at six. We headed over to Turning Point. We want the weird blue fucked up beer. God damn it! We got there. That's what and James they Harrington tapped did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Your friend, That's by the way. That's what happens when James Harrington yeah. goes in your brewery. Yeah, it is. In his blue sweatpants, glitter beer. <laughs> he adds blue. Okay, so, so well, for those, that I'm don't a dickhead <laughs> for wearing sweatpants at my house. Man, but you put blue, blue glitter beer. fucking glitter yes. beer. Yes. Yes. James Harrington, I challenge you to a fight on this show. Nice. Bring it on. Live on the air, you and I fight to the death well, over blue glitter beer. <laughs> Not quite the death. <laughs> no, the death. Or the pain. I, we can fight to the pain. pain. Yeah, pain is better than death. I like so, pain. Uh, death uh, death leaves quicker. paperwork. I, I guess right. you're, you're anti-blue sour glitter beer. Yes, yes. Well, 100%. I'm 130% against that. Hey, I say bring it on. And I love James Harrington, and I love Turning Point. And I love stupid beer. And I love stupid beer, yes. yes. <laughs> but I draw the line. I draw the line with fucking glitter, okay? I, I'm just yes. saying. Dr. I, Seuss would be mad about that beer. And the glitter settles <laughs> out, so really all you've done is made a pain in the ass to clean. T- Tyler and I know of a local brewery that just this week needed some flake corn. So they couldn't get over to get it from us quick enough, and they used tortilla chips. In their Tex-Mex IPA. I'm intrigued. No, 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 yeah, it was tortilla chips, right? It was 
it was uh, corn, corn tortillas. Uh, uh, corn tortillas. That's right. It was corn tortillas. Work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I could you know. see how that would work. Yeah. You know. the, the the picture that they sent us of the mash was quite interesting. <laughs> All right. What do you got, Mikey? Well, we're heading uh, up north, eh? Up north, eh? How how far are we into the show? What are, where, where we're, are we? At? We're uh, two and a half. I don't think we have time to do Canada justice at this point. Canada doesn't need to be justified. <laughs> <laughs> how many of do you have? I don't know. Yeah, you do. We're just gonna shotgun. No, <laughs> get them through quick. <laughs> Never done that so, in my life. So, uh, while there's some dead air, let's uh, ten. Yeah, oh we're not going to do ten tonight, surely. I brought so what Brandon said. So, how about we throw out a coupon code? Have we not done that? As, as Brandon leaves. <coughs> All right. So we need. Yeah. That's the coupon code. You can't spell that. So let's throw out a coupon That's code. That's the challenge. What are you talking about? And our coupon code is Twix Straw. Twix straw. Twix, Twix straw. I like it. Okay. Now, I so want to try it with a barrel The first person topic. to respond on the Texas, Texas Brewing. Brewing Inc. feed saying Twix straw wins, and Stubby's not here to, uh, to a give... A seven-barrel brew system? No, no, we can't <laughs> do that. Don't, don't no, because that's not fair that on the there. guy last week that won the four-barrel bright tank. Okay, fit. all right. Um, so so let's do a $20 gift certificate. $20 gift certificate. I love it. It's that not works. quite on the same level as a four-barrel bright tank, but it's pretty close, I think. <laughs> $20 yeah, gift yeah. certificate. Twix and straw. Twix straw. Twix that is the coupon straw. straw. Okay. So, um, wow, big shock. Aaron Rodgers piped in. No, never, straw. never, sh no, surely not. He's one of five people watching. I promise the other three are in this room. See, so. and I think we should change it up. And only I've only you, got two people only watching. Only if you shoot a video of you drinking oh, with a Twix, Twix straw, straw yeah. do you win? Y you, you know I what think it? that every episode we should just send Aaron a prize. Uh, well, I, I it's either Aaron or, um, <laughs> um the, Once every couple the, weeks the, the firefighter, um, I can't remember. Blaren. Trimble? No, 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 no. There's, there's a, it's one of the firefighters. He's a, uh, I think he's a North Hills firefighter. So, uh, Aaron, in order to win this uh, gift card, we're going to need evidence of you drinking a, a barrel aged beer through a Twix straw. Is ten fifty barrel aged? Well, no, ten fifty is not, but 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 we but want barrel aged ten fifty barrel aged one through a Twix straw. Well, we're, oh, we're, 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 we're just raising the game, so Aaron. We're, Aaron, we're if I were down. you, I'd rebel, man. I wouldn't put up with <laughs> no, this. No, I don't think you have to. <laughs> they're they're moving the goalposts on you, man. <laughs> anyway, my glass okay, is just a plain ten fifty. My glass is going to be empty. So Mike is going to pour us a Canadian beer of some sort. We're just not going to do a ten. Where are we at time wise here? We did eat Canadian cheese, so that. That kind that of Canadian count. cheese was kick ass. Too. We'll start with the steam whistle. Yes, it really was. What do we got, Mikey? Well, <coughs> where, where are we at time? That wise sounds here? like a Canadian sex move. Steam whistle. Tyler, where are we at time? It wise? might, it might be two and a half hours. <laughs> Almost two and a half hours. Almost two and a half hours. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't think we should go too terribly long. No, with we this. we won't. Yeah. But say my glass is empty and Mikey's got beer. So <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm game to drink because I have to work tomorrow. Okay. I plan, no, I, the logic what, yeah, I plan on so being fucking hung over tomorrow. So what is steam whistle? I'm absolutely going to eat Pete's uh, key lime pie <laughs> and his cheese. So, so. Um, and raspberry jam. <laughs> steam whistle. I don't have any more bites in the. Is right um, I'm told one of the most one, one of the more popular beers up there served so everywhere. So let's back up a little bit. You were in oh Canada. yes, I'm sorry. Where, where in Canada were you? I went to Toronto, eh? And. Um, why? Uh, for a wedding, eh? Okay. <laughs> I'm going to say that as much as I can to piss off my girlfriend. I was going to say, you've got a lot listening. more to lose than any of us. <laughs> by, yeah. by saying that, you're just out she, front. You're, she you're really puts up with trail. me. She puts up a lot. Well, that a goes for any girl that dates you. Yeah, it's, that's very true. That's very true. Any, any, actually, any anyone that, that knows me. Any one of us. Anyone yeah, that knows yeah, me, yeah. yeah. Mikey, or, you can't piss her off tonight. The Maple Leafs won. I bet. You know, I, I almost want to say challenge accepted, but I probably shouldn't. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah, try it. It's a terrible idea. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
So I was up there for a wedding, uh, for one of her friend's weddings, and um, that'd be really weird if you had a friend in, Con- in Toronto that you went to a wedding for. That in so Canada, Toronto is a- directly a- north of Mississippi, correct? <laughs> <laughs> just about what fifteen hundred miles. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just Ish. being an asshole. No, uh, not not at all, sir. <laughs> um, so, um, anybody fans of the show um, How I Met Your Mother? Absolutely. Okay, so remember That's the where Robin is from, right? Well, remember the bit about uh, Robin Sparkles and Sand Castles in the Sand. Hallelujah. Well, and and you know, or the mall. If this is if this is the, the '90s, why does it look like the '80s? Right. Uh huh. And the response is, well, the 80s didn't come to Canada until like 93. So, so all of Canada looks like the no, early no, no. 2000s? No, no. <laughs> the beer scene up there is a little bit delayed. Early 2000s. Uh, early well, here, 2000s. Here, here's what I'll say about that. What, what I do know is that for a long time, Canadians prided themselves on their beer was a lot more manly than our beer was in terms of it was... It was more high alcohol, and and they pride themselves on being drinkers up there, as opposed to our light American lagers. So, in that respect, to them, for a long time, we were behind. Yes, but like like now, um, like the the menus at at the the restaurants, the menus at um, we we went to a one of the brew pubs. Um, didn't get to hit up any of the um, the the breweries yet. That's pretty good. I'm going back soon, um, but the the beer lists are very old school. Uh, I can see that beer list, and I sent you guys a picture of one of the old one of the beer lists at, at the the restaurant we were at. Yeah, and it's, I, it's, I think that was my comment on <clears throat> it. Yeah, I thought that looks like a good old school brew pub. Yeah, just a in, solid a bit, yeah in a good way. Yeah, in a good way. Like it was a really solid basic yeah. beer list that you could find some good. Yeah, uh, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't overly IPA heavy like you see currently in the states. Right. It wasn't. It wasn't. Six different IPAs with with four hazy and, and you know, um, they, they they do have IPAs. They do have a considerable amount of IPAs and um, uh, American style pale ales. And I actually have at home a Canadian style pale ale, um, but they do have a, a, a heavy bit of. It's hoppy, but it's sorry. <laughs> it's it's sorry that it's hoppy. <laughs> um, there's a lot of lagers, um, and and the the brew pub we went to. Uh, had they had a blonde ale and then they have a hoppy lager and the, the only difference is um one of them gets an extra like whirlpool hopping it's the same beer it's just they mm-hmm. they do an extra whirlpool hopping on one and i actually have uh, i have one of those as well uh this is what she said is one of the more popular beers in the area or it's more <laughs> widely available is the steam whistle well it does state on said? it it does state on it that it is canada's Premium, premium pilsner, pilsner. Which, which I feel better about trying. I mean, if it had said just Canadian's Pilsner, and you know what it reminds me of? Spotted Cow. This is That's much right. better yeah, than this. I bought a, a four-pack of... Don't uh, hoard it over there. Come on, cash it out. I bought, I bought a four-pack, and it. I thought the four-pack was terrible. Um, it, it, it had an off flavor to it um, that I, I just couldn't peg. Um, like the fermentation was bad, and and this is much better. This is yeah, this is nice and clean. This reminds me a lot of Spotted Cow. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, not bad at like, all. Really good, I, really I, good I beer. Drink a lot of it. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know they are accustomed to, you know, Pilsner type lagers. Basically, I I, I I hesitate to call them light lagers, but you know your basic yellow fizzy beer yeah. that you yes. find. Yeah. In a lot of countries. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So the next one I've got is the Amsterdam Brewery, and this is the, the brew pub we went to. Um, this is their three-speed lager. I have this on tap there, and their blonde, this is the same beer as their blonde. Um, the blonde is just hoppier than this. I love that it's a 568 milliliter can. Yes, yes. This is the extra <laughs> tall boy That's that I brought back. That's a very odd measurement, isn't yeah. it? That Fi- is awesome. 568 mil- milliliters. So that's what, like seventeen and a half. That's like, got to equal some sort like? of imperial measurement, right? Uh, I have no idea, but you know, 
It's they a, didn't land on 568. It's a, it's a big can of beer, and it's pretty dang good. So um, the other thing I, I noticed, um, you know, and going uh, Toronto to a, a smaller town, and sir, I have no idea if we were north, south, east, or west, to be honest. Um, we went to oh. Hamilton. Um, it reminds me of the Pacific Northwest in that, all the little neighborhoods seem to have um, a, a brewery, and they had brew pubs. So very much like Pacific Northwest, where there's brew pubs in each of the small small towns. It's well, you know, that's a very European thing too. And true. And before yeah. Prohibition, that's how America was too. Mm-hmm. It's nineteen. I like two zero six fluid ounces. So okay, so so it's what we call here in the states the stovepipe. Which Oscar Blues does the nineteen point okay. six yeah. ounce, like which <laughs> Rar now does. Yep. Oh, is this the banger size? Oh, it's the new. Yeah, that's the new thing. This is replacing the bomber, right? Yes, that's like, the can I, size I, bomber. I was yeah. at uh, bomber, Specs yes. recently, and the bomber section is a tenth of what it used to be. Really? They're, well, they're just no large format beers anymore. Well, it, it, and some of that is. I mean, uh, I feel that that's twofold. Nobody's bottling anymore. Uh, or, or not nobody, but a lot of these breweries. No, have you're gone right. To, the can, to canning. canning is really taking it over. So, so that's why then this is kind of. I, I look at the the 19.6 is that's like the craft beer equivalent to the tall boy. Yeah. To, to the 24 ounce Bud Light, you know. Well, it, I I also like think every it, every one of these beers I brought back is a tall boy. Yeah. I, except for three, I brought two 12s and then that one. Um, everything you buy in Canada, uh, a, uh, singles. Um, it's half liter. It's it's the half liters. Yeah. So so they have the um, the liquor store, and they've got a beer section in the liquor store, and then they've got the beer store. And apparently, the beer store used to be uh, where you walked in, and there was you know a guy at a counter, and you said, "I want a case of whatever." Moose and, knuckle. And yes, if you want a case of moose case knuckle, of moose knuckle, and the nice. guy went to the back and brought you the case of moose knuckle. So now you can actually walk through the the refrigerated back. Um, Sarah had also never been into a beer store. You only want knuckle. the moose knuckle from the front. You don't right. want it from the back. <laughs> you, you don't you want, want you want <laughs> back <laughs> moose knuckle. You want the fresh. Uh, that's some inside information. Appa- you want the appa- fresh moose yeah. knuckle. Apparently, only whores go to uh, the beer store, and so you know she had never been to a beer store. Of course, so not. you know. Uh, but the beer store is where I found Bud Light Apple. I, I saw feel, that I picture. Bud Light, that that, that like intrigued you skipped me. over a big thing there. Uh, yeah, probably so. Well, okay. uh, Bud Light well, Apple, Bud Light Lemonade, and Bud Light Radler, it's was prob- it? It's maybe? probably a good thing we skipped. <laughs> yes. Um, we spared y'all. That's all it is. I'm, I'm going to bookmark <laughs> that one that we're going to talk about later. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm really curious. Let me see if I'm gonna find that picture. Yeah. So we have yeah Bud Light Apple, Bud Light Apple, Bud Light Lemonade Radler, and Bud Light Radler. That's not. Right. Um. And uh, I'm Bud disappointed Apple. you didn't bring us any I of that good Canadian goodness. Some. I'm like, not disappointed at all. It's not a Radler, a beer mixed with lemonade. So um, I'm confused yes. by Radler and yes. Lemonade yes. Radler. Yes. Yes. Lemonade, Radler, that's an I'm, oxymoron. I'm, I'm going to bring some home on the next trip. Okay. No, you should skip that. Yeah. You know what? I think it deserves <laughs> trying. I feel like we need to dog that some. You should bring us this good beer. Yeah, because we don't ever dog ABM best. Never. So. Never. Isn't a Radler grapefruit-based? Usually grapefruit-based. Okay, so yes. then the lemon Lemonade Radler, Radler makes sense. Be, so be the, more the, of a shandy. So what if, what if we were to say that... that uh, Canadians call that call grapefruit lemonade. What would you say to that? Is <laughs> that <laughs> wrong? Uh, yeah, you no, know better on. than to step into my trap. No, you? yeah. <laughs> what What was the question? What would I say to a Canadian? <coughs> no, I wouldn't say that. That was drinking a grapefruit rattler. No. no. What would it, What would you say to a Canadian that says that uh, lemonade is grapefruit? How old were they? That doesn't matter. I well, feel like le- we're le- at like no lemonade is not. No, so and so walked into a bar. And no, I'm like trying to trap what? the English no. guy into okay, admitting so, that. Okay, so lemonade. To, they to, don't know to what a racial is, Canadian that's all. joke. No, come on, I'll, I'll I'll go there, but we need to get it right. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> go there. Okay, so a rad- Nigel knows where I'm going. So a Radler, 
<laughs> being a German beer with grapefruit, okay, okay is Fruit different beer. to a shandy, which is an English beer with lemonade, which should only be drunk by teenagers before the age of 18 <laughs> when they can legally <laughs> drink. Any but adult, it's not actually lemonade. Any so adult so drinking a shandy after the age of 18 needs to be... Drawn a quarter? Yeah, take, <laughs> taken taken, taken to a corner and beaten the snot out of it. Is that just in Britain or is that here in the States also? Because they're Here in the States also. Uh, Anybody we over the, the age of, of 18 line. drinking cool, shandy though. is wrong. What about Zima? How does Zima fall <laughs> into that? <laughs> I think you've got to be 14 and no older to drink Zima. <laughs> All right. And that's that correct. <laughs> and, and that no, is you cut it half with the vodka. Dude. And Stubby yeah. missed out the Twix in the. And that is by no yeah, means. You missed yeah. the Twix straw on the 1050, dude. And that is by no oh, means me advocating forward. underage drinking. Here. You oh. fucked it up. You bit the whole thing in you half. You have to bite each side and then Make drink a Twix through. straw. Jesus oh. Christ! <laughs> Oh my God! Cool. I got no, no, you you missed out. On, see, on see, on Good Friday, the Fri best part of what I've got, I've got on Good more. Friday, you chanting that, I feel a little. I've sacrilege. got more Twix goodness here, right? Now. I mean, Jesus Christ! Oh, sorry. I mean. <laughs> so what do you have to do? You oh bite God, each so. side and hey, then Seuss drink Marimba. through the cookie. You, you bite the end off each end and suck hard. <laughs> suck it hard. <laughs> Not the side. Uh, you bite each end each and then end. drink through it like a straw. The wafer the becomes side? a straw. Did you bite the here, side off? Here. He bit the it's side off. I got, I got another one. Come it's back. A, it's a wafer. Uh, it's in a minute. I have like a cup. I can't drink it up. Jesus. No, not really. I got a cup, too. Christ. <laughs> All right, so next is Big Rock Pilsner. This is a Czech-style pills. <laughs> and then you what? bit the side. <laughs> <laughs> what is he, uh, what is he drinking through this straw? Ooh, ooh, I've got a beer that would be cool. He's drinking IPA through a Twix Daddy straw. Mikey. So oh don't combine an IPA and a Twix straw. I want to try this through a Twix straw. What is it? Ooh, raspberry. One of the most interesting pairs I've ever had. And I think this is pretty cool. Were you guys there for that Christmas party when they did this? Where they did the Sam Smith's Yeah, I was not a fan. How do they make it warm? <laughs> they put it in hot water. I was at oh, the I was just They floated party. all the bottles in hot water. Oh. So the, the Sam Smith was probably 90 degrees when we drank it. So and, and, and paired it with fan. what? With brownies. So the other day in class, ah, we had okay. uh, Lakewood Temptress that was warmed up, and we had it with brownies. It was pretty fantastic. Which, which Temptress? Just regular. Regular. Cookies. Okay. You know, I would take either one of those cool also with brownies. <laughs> right? That's what she, that's what she said. <laughs> and then you eat it. It's even better. Oh yeah, eating the Twix afterwards. Fucking that, fantastic. That I think is the best part. That's actually. a game changer yeah. right there. <laughs> All right. I'm going to I'm going to suggest that that we See, end this. I'm just trying to get brownie <laughs> points with my teacher. So well, you should get brownie points because that was an excellent presentation tonight. It because was really he good. follows me on Tapped, and I know we're supposed to only be drinking BJCP oh, Robert? style. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like Robert, give her he some knows. slack, okay? Like Don't be a dick. He knows I failed that. Tremendously. <laughs> Jeez, what? A I don't check into the BJCP ones. Since since <laughs> when's he been a, a judgmental fella? He's not. Oh. But <laughs> I just you give know? him a hard time because I see him toast my check-ins, and I'm like, I'm not supposed to be drinking this. You what? Stubby says that again. <laughs> hmm. A little sweet on that one. All right. So I'm here, here's what I'm gonna I'm gonna propose we end this right here and we uh, do the Canadian beers. When we have a, yeah. uh, more time to really enjoy them instead of being drunk and stupid like we are right now. <laughs> that's, that's the whole point to them. <laughs> you brought back Wait. a lot of beers, and I'd like to give them their due, you know. Drunk We're as stupid is when this show starts, isn't it? Oh, man. Ding, 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 ding. Really? Now, really? now I see. Uh, look I look see at this table. Look at this table. Tell me we're about ready to drink ten more beers. <laughs> no, it's, o it's only eight more Never. beers. It's only eight more beers at it's this point. Oh, only eight, huh? Oh, okay. <laughs> that's, well. that's 
That's why we hire Liv. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> In future episodes, we're going to drink Mikey's beer. <laughs> we're going to drink Canadian beer. Yeah. That's aged. It's okay with you. <laughs> and aged Canadian beer. And aged Canadian beer. And we yes. might drink one or two through a Twix straw. <laughs> and we will be two <laughs> weeks older than it is now. And we do want to thank I may not be here. <laughs> we do want to thank everybody for bearing with us lately. Because yes. uh, we've, we've had to work our way through some changes. And... Uh, it's uh, sometimes not easy for you guys to listen or wait to listen to us and uh, wait for a podcast to be released. So, uh, as always, we'd love to hear feedback and questions. If you've got any beers to send to us, we want to try them, talk to them about them on the shows. Um, your beer or commercial beer from e- your area, either please. Either way, yep. Uh, be sure to check out our Patreon account, patreon.com, come over at radio. Uh, support the show. We have two, five, ten, and twenty dollar options because every little bit counts. We want to reward you where we can uh, to keep the show going, get involved, and improve it. And we will reward a lucky Patreon listener with every live show, especially if they're called Aaron Rodgers, apparently. <laughs> uh, so we gave he still bu- owes us a, a beer chug through a Twix straw to get that. Yeah, we, g- we did give away $20 <laughs> gift certificate tonight, so just so you know. Aaron. Aaron. I was going to say what? And uh, we will have that uh, random drawing at the end of each month. Um, for our more. patrons. Thanks again for listening to Come Root Radio. Be sure to share with your friends on social media. Social media. <laughs> social media. Give us some ratings on iTunes and Stitcher and send any ideas and comments to info at texasbrewinginc.com. Also, you can check in on the Brew Days with the guys at their Brew Focus Facebook pages at Brew with Stubby, Brew with Brando, Brew with Mikey B, Brew with Chris, Brew with Greg, and of course, Brew with Nigel. Until next time, guys, thank you for listening. Thanks for hanging in there with us. Ha. What, are about? what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Come and brew it. Come and brew it. Come and brew it, eh? Hey. Come and brew it. All of a sudden, I felt like I, I kind of flashed back to when I was a kid and. And what? <laughs> 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 it's like the end of Masterpiece Theater. You know what I'm talking about? No. It was, a K, it was like the, the PBS shit. Well, we're, still, we're, we're, we're still alive, so we're. we're, we're <laughs> well, I was gonna say, are we or have we been? Have we We've been ended with Masterpiece Theater. <laughs> no.